The Horrible Gamers podcast may contain content not suitable for all ages. Listener discretion is advised. Podcast show number 204 being recorded on May the 19th, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Jesus Gonzalez, also known as Jesus Walks a Lot. Today I'm joined by the crew plus one from the great white North Canada land itself, where the Tim Hortons flows through the rivers and the <laughs> mooses are ridden everywhere. We, we do. We ride our mooses everywhere. Ryan What's going Gibson. On, everybody? <laughs> Tim Hortons. Other episodes of Horrible Gamers. Let's do this. Give me seven, 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 seven. And from the West Coast, the best coast, California, my friend Henley Merrill, Gunny Chief is back. Welcome back, Gunny. It's good to be here, guys. Glad to see your smiling faces. Ooh, yeah. And from the Pacific Northwest, Washington State, not as good as Oregon, but pretty close, my friend Mark Cox, also known as Wingman709 from this Xbox Live podcast, is here. Welcome, Wingman, to the show. Greetings, salutations, and you're not my friend anymore, Jesus, but oh. yeah, woo, thanks for having me on. Well, that's, <laughs> thank you for letting me know on the show, I appreciate that. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> let's get the, fun friend. Oh, man, let's, let's get the show started, guys. If you want to follow that's us on name. Twitter, you can, over at underscore horrible gamers. Uh, leave a review on iTunes at the end of the show, or right now, you can just pause it and leave a review on iTunes. Head on over to our Facebook community over at Horrible Gamers Podcast community. If you find our page, there's a link to the group in our page, Horrible Gamers Podcast. And the group is called the Horrible Gamers Podcast Community. It is a close group, so that means anything you post in there is only viewable by the members of the group and all that good stuff. You can always email us at feedback at horriblegamers.com to give us any feedback you have for the show or messages on Xbox Live, uh, Facebook, uh, or wherever else you can find us. And let's go through our Patreon list real quick. We got a new Patreon this week, guys. I saw that. Yeah. Saw that. So if you head on over to patreon.com forward slash horrible gamers, like Jonathan Hall did, Alan Maybe, Joshua Wolf, Evan Tanaka, John Jerome, Adam Sunday, and Clint Thiel, and the newest member, Dirty Bite, you get a shout out on the show like they just did. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you guys for being supporters of the show. We really appreciate the money you give us every month goes towards the show, and uh, we're going to continue to bring improvements to the show, and we're going to bring lots of live shows next month during the E3 week. Lots of live shows, so get ready for that craziness. I'm, I don't know if I'm ready for that again, guys. It was <laughs> rough know. last year. <laughs> was, yeah. Are you going to join us again? You should join us for the Microsoft conference. You should. You should. Uh, I... Might be able to. Yeah. Sunday Yay! on Sunday. Isn't it? It's confirmed. Is it Sunday morning or Sunday evening? <laughs> morning. No, afternoon. It's afternoon. Yeah, like it's middle afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. It's evening if you're on the East Coast, but we're not on the lame East Coast. We're not there. Yeah, Shut exactly. your damn mouth. <laughs> our intro song is done by Fowler and Twistix. It is called The Breakout. Our outro song is broke, done by Broke for Free. It is called Night Owl. So check them out. And, and let's get into video games. Video games is what the people want to hear, and they want to hear we've been playing this week. Lots of lots of games now, that I Jesus, played this I week. Jesus, I was told that we that the people really want to hear us talk about a bunch of bullshit for two hours. Oh, okay. Why don't we do that instead? Let's not. No video games, games this week. No, no, no video games this week. Oh well, fuck. Okay, well uh, today I went to McDonald's, and uh... <laughs> we all did. Hey, Jesus, oh boy, I want to hear more. Everyone except for Gunny went to McDonald's. Really? I went, okay. I went Friday. I went yesterday. Friday is my McDonald's day. I went and got <laughs> the big breakfast out. with hot cakes. I had... I'm keep you off the podcast now. I had the Egg White Delight muffin. What the hell is that? You don't have I the like Egg White one. Delight? That's bomb, dude. It's like an English muffin, perfectly toasted, with some egg whites, a slice of ham, 
don't and get some your, you don't get your yolk in the middle. Yeah, no. you don't get the yolk. I think it tastes better. It tastes way better. Yeah, way I, better. I actually don't. I, I'm not a big fan of yolk. Mm. Not not solid cooked yolk. I like runny yolks. But not, yeah, me too. Not, not, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I got that this morning. It was pretty good, guys. And the hash brown was nicely toasted good. It was hot. Got my Coke right here. We're good. We're good to go. Coke, you Coke for breakfast? Fuck yeah, I drink Coke for I'm American, yeah. motherfucker. Drink yeah, Coke for I'm breakfast. <laughs> fucking get a coffee, That is my afternoon evening, <laughs> man. Get a coffee. Why not an orange juice? <laughs> orange juice? Coke, cola, you, baby. Uh, I, I usually you, get an apple juice or a milk. You get a Coke too, wingman? Yeah. That's right. Coke and a smile, baby. That's right. Mm. (laughs) I got to say McDonald's Coke is probably the best Coke ever. It's been scientifically proven they have the best Coke. It's just the truth, guys. (laughs) Scientifically proven. (laughs) Oh, you know what I noticed the other day? I don't know if you guys have this down there or not. Uh, But, um, you know, Barks? The the root beer? beer? Yeah. Make a fucking cream soda now? Really? Oh, it's a white cream soda? I fucking love that. Oh, sounds good. Oh, (laughs) <laughs> I need to find me some. <laughs> I got it. I got it out of one of those, you know, the free, the Coke freestyle machines. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was one of those, and I was like, Oh, oh yeah. Shit. Actually, I've have had that before because I. Yeah, I remember seeing it. Yeah. But then, fucking, we were ordering pizza the other night. She's like, Oh, they have Barks fucking cream soda, and I was like, What? Yeah. Sure enough, I ordered some. They're, uh, like, oh, they make them in cans now. Nice. On the freestyle machine, they have the. Uh, the orange cream soda. Oh, that was yeah. so good, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> soda. We have enough of those in our area. The freestyle They're machines are the best, dude. Places. Like, I think the restaurants around here have them. Yeah, like our round table yeah. pizza has one. Our Safeway stores have them. I, I think almost every every fast food place in my town now has a freestyle machine. Except for, like, Dairy Queen. They still have, like, the old school fountain, but... Everything else has a freestyle machine now. It's the future, man. Freestyle machines. 100 yeah, flavors. I remember my brother, who's up in Washington, up in Olympia. I remember him telling me about them a long time ago, and I'm like, I don't even know what that is. So they must have started <laughs> what is up this there. Freestyle machine? They used to only have them at like, the big movie theaters yeah. up here. But now they're everywhere. Now they're everywhere. in all kinds of different places. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Anyways, let's get into let's video not games. bullshit about fucking <laughs> McDonald's and Let's talk about food. video games. Food was first, now video games. All right. Uh, God of War. God of War is my game on the list here, number one game on the list. So I went back to it. Was it Thursday night, Wednesday night a little bit? Mostly Thursday. I uh, went into it, and like I was like, oh, I'll play like an hour or two. It was like four or five hours later. I was still playing it. And I realized something. I was having a tough time with the enemies, but that was because I was doing a lot of side quests. I was running into, like, these yeah. things that were, like, way overpowered for what I had. And then, so I was like, you know what? I'm done with the side quests for now. I did, like, one or two, and then I went back, and I, and I got back to the main story. And, like, I'm on the third mission, Ryan. I don't know if you're there yet, or, like, the third or fourth where you are going you get, to an ice did realm. You get, um, did you get your blades yet? No. Oh, jeez. I went to an ice realm where the giant is laying on the ice. He's dead. Sorry. I think. Yeah. And I went to that area, and I was... Dude, I was slaying everything like nothing. Don't touch that ice, dude. Just fucking leave him alone. Dude, everything was so easy to do. It was just... I was killing the fuck out of everything. Oh, okay. I thought you I thought you were having problems there. No, no dude. I everything was super easy. Because I, I was going through the same thing you were, Jesus, where it was like... I'm doing all these side quests, and I'm, now I'm starting to have problems, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then I said, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to just keep going down the storyline path. Mm-hmm. And then it was fine like, after that. But, yeah, I remember running into the – he's like a, a, one of those rock dudes, right? And you have to hit him in the chest. Oh, I've ran into those guys like three or four times. Oh, okay. I thought that's what you were talking about. Oh, those guys about. are easy. I, I figured those guys out pretty quick. you got to throw the axe at their chest or whatever when they open – yeah. And then their pieces fall out, and then you pick them up, and you throw it at him, and then you jump on him, and you punch him in the face or whatever. Yeah. yeah. See, those guys are pretty... Like, I, I, I adapted myself to fight these, like, super overpowered fucking people. Now, when I got back to the main game, and I was fighting these Just level... Just plowing through Yeah, everything. I was fighting these level 2, level 3 characters. I was like, these guys are so easy. Where's the challenge in this? I went through that whole mission, 
the only people that put up a fight were the two brothers at the end of that mission that show up. The lightning guys? Yeah, the two god brothers or whatever. They show up and they're like, they're gods themselves and you're fighting them or whatever. That was kind of like a, not really a challenge. It was more of, okay, I know what I got to do. I just got to keep hitting them, keep hitting them. It's just they had a big health bar. That's the only reason it took me forever to beat them. But I beat them on my first try. Um, That's what I was talking to you about last week. That's where I was last week. That's where you were last week? See, so I I beat that now and I got my little ice shard that can open the seals now. Mm-hmm. I got that, so now, now <laughs> I left that area, and I see an ice seal door in front of that area, and I run to it, and I open it, and I'm like, and you're going through there, and the little boy is like, I have a bad feeling about this, and then Kratos is like, what kind of bad feeling, boy? I, I just think there's going to be something really bad down there, and then like the little head on your on your belt, he's like, Oh, uh, well, this is kind of a prison, you know, uh, there could be something down here. And then you get down there, and there's like some crazy-ass thing down there, and I can't beat it. <laughs> I cannot beat that thing. I'm like, holy shit, this, that thing, I I stayed up till midnight on Thursday, even though I had to be up at 4 in the morning. I stayed up till midnight, fucking for one hour straight, trying to defeat this thing, I couldn't beat it. I couldn't do it. For one hour yeah, straight, sometimes I just... sometimes you just gotta walk away. I just it. kept retrying, kept retrying, kept retrying, keep reload checkpoint, reload checkpoint. And it was like, dude, this thing is so hard, I cannot do it. Even when I go into rage mode, like, I barely yeah. do any damage to it. It's just destroying me, man. Um, you level up. You need to level up. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna leave that area and go get some better armor and stuff and come back and kill that fucking thing because I want to kill it because now it pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I gotta say the game is still awesome dude I I fucking love God of War I honestly don't know I, I, playing it that night I was sitting there realizing I don't know how any game can beat that game for game of the year so far yeah I mean honestly I don't like, know. you know me I'm not a fucking Playstation shill I don't, I'm not you know yeah. that game is fucking fantastic it's just good. And I've had my issues with it where I put it down and, and walk away from it, but I always come back to it and I start having a and good And everything time is like, there's no loading screens. The game just keeps going. It's so it's immersive, gone, yeah. dude. It's so immersive because you're constantly just, there's never a loading screen. There's never a break in the game. You're always running into something, finding out, finding a new puzzle to solve, finding a new thing to loot. Finding a new area, a hidden area. So finding out that, that something that you got lets you get all these yeah. things that you couldn't figure out how to open before. Exactly. You know? I fucking love it, dude. I was. And, and was Jesus, it's going to just keep going. Like, I, I'm a little further than you, and there's like, there's some shit coming, and you're going to get some new stuff that's going to gonna show you gonna let you get into some of the stuff that you've been going what the hell am i supposed to do here yeah so i got like some green armor now because i I crafted some badass looking it's called like i think it's legendary or epic some like purple the purple level i crafted some some armor there Uh, so i got like the pants and like the, the the top armor piece on that um so Kratos, my Kratos is pretty leveled up, but that thing kept killing me. So I'm thinking I have to come back even more leveled up to fight that thing. Um, yeah. But that's probably what I'm going to do today. I, like I got to say, man, the game doesn't let up. It just keeps going and going and going and going. And every time like you think you have reached the plateau of what you're going to experience, like it's going to be the same from here on out. And it's never the same. The dialogue is always changing. I love the dialogue, the little uh, dwarves bring when you meet them the dudes from the shops like hey i can't believe you let my fucking brother touch this thing you know and then they start talking (laughs) shit to you and you know there's the one brother who's like he's all he's he's all nice and educated then the other brother's like an asshole he's like a fucking just cussing you out all the time and then the other dude's like all nice i love how the difference between them and their brothers and they're they're completely different from each other um dude the kid flips out on one of them oh does he yeah, so I I, I I went to an I did a side mission where uh, you have to collect some bones to try to contact the dead realm. Yeah, and and Kratos is like, we're not gonna do this. When the guy's proposing to do the to, to do the thing, he's like, we don't have time for your stupid quest, ghost. We're leaving. We're on an important quest ourselves. And the little boy's like, oh come on, dad, you know like. I want to talk to mom, you know, what if we could talk to mom? And he's like, boy, 
don't talk to me like that or something like that. And he's like, come on, Dad. You know, he's like all begging him. And the cradle swell and he gives in. He's like, fine. If we run across these bones, we'll bring them back to you. But that's it. You know, like, so then I, of course, I'm like, this looks pretty cool. Maybe they will get to talk to the dead mom. So I went and did that side quest right away. <laughs> and you come back and something completely different happens. Mm -hmm. And at the end, the little boy's like, go ahead. Just say it. Say it. I told you, boy. <laughs> like the sure enough like Kratos is like I told you boy <laughs> I was fucking laughing I was like oh my god this this dialogue is so amazing dude the little oh, boy dude, just seems better, real dude. yeah it's it just gets better, crazy Jesus. Because it's like the kid grows up yeah. and, and gets this attitude against his fucking father. <laughs> and and the, the quirks that go back and forth are fucking yeah. hilarious. Yeah, like, so just, I, I love the, it, dude. Boy, you listen to me, boy. <laughs> He's the kid just all defiant. like just, oh. I love the story where uh, I was going to the, to the lake. And you know how they're always telling stories when you're on the boat? It's like, tell me a story. And then the, the little ancient guy will be like, Back in the day, Thor fought this person, and this happened, and Odin, and blah, blah, blah. He's telling, like, the lore of the land or whatever. Uh, there was a story where he was talking about how uh, Odin's Odin killed his father because his father had killed his grandpa. And it's just like a line of kids killing their parents because they're always making an oath to the gods or something where they, they, they vow to revenge to get a vengeance for whoever they got killed. So they have to kill the people, you know? So, and then he's like, well, why did he kill his father? Well, because he was mad at him. And then <laughs> the little boy's like, sometimes I'm mad, I'm mad at my dad and I don't try to kill him. And, and then Kratos is like, I'd like to see you try. <laughs> <laughs> I was fucking laughing. And then like, we went and we did like a whole mission and we get back on the boat and then Kratos is like, why are you mad at me, boy? And he's like, what? He's like, why are you mad at me sometimes? You said you were mad at me earlier. He's like, uh, I don't want to talk about it. He's like, tell me, boy. He's like, I said I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you know? It was, like, <laughs> it was like, you know, like, Kratos kind of, like, thought about it, like, during that mission. He's like, oh, fuck. What if he does try to stab me in the back or something? You know what I mean? <laughs> it was good, dude. I love the, I love the story. I love the, yeah. the game is so good. And then it looks good. And then the photo mode is really good. I was messing around with the photo mode uh, the other day. <laughs> the expressions you can make Kratos do is funny, dude. And you can make him ch change their facial expressions when you're taking a photo. It's pretty oh, really? good. Yeah. You can make him smile. Because, you know, they're always serious. You can make mm -hmm. him smile or look scared or whatever. Or <laughs> look surprised. It's, it's good. I like the game. So, man, if you haven't played God of War, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Don't know. Don't know. Yeah, Wish it's definitely PS4. it's definitely a game that that any any gamer should play. Definitely, it's so a, good. It's an amazing game, Winga. It's it's too bad you sold your PS4, man. I know, but this game yeah. is definitely worth having it. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, you gotta try it, Wingman. Oh, I just wish you would see. I got it. Gems of War. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna Gems say a better game. Oh man. Um, but, but yeah, that's my first game on the list. There's a few other games I have on here, but uh, go ahead, Ryan. What's your games? What are your games? Well, other than God of War, because I've been playing a lot of that this week. Um, I've also continued to play uh, a little bit of Super Mega Baseball. Mm -hmm. Um. That, that game's great. It's fun. It's baseball. I don't know. Like, I don't have anything else new to say about it. I've said it before, but yeah. I'm still playing it, and it's a baseball game. And you guys know I'm not a sports guy. No, I'm surprised so, you're still playing. You know, it. it's it's actually a lot of fun. And uh, other than that, I've been playing some Death Road to Canada. Hell yeah! Um, I'm this is I still America. haven't made it to Canada. I've gotten close a couple of times, but. It gets so hard in the end, man. It's mm -hmm. like, I, I had a whole group of guys. There was like four of us. And I'm like, okay, I got a group of four. You know, I got lots of food. I got lots of gas. Things are going good. And I was like, I might actually make it. And I think I got to like day fucking like the last three days. So it's like the little maple leaf and it has a number beside it. And that's how many days you have to get through, I think. Anyways. And I got to the, there was only three left, and I was like, fuck, I'm going to make it. And then I, I walked into this siege that was like, the zombies are 
are erratic and they're very angry and aggressive. And I was like, oh, no. And the horde is huge. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, this is going to be crazy. And sure enough, I went in and all four of my guys died in there. Oh, I was damn. like, oh, man, I was so close. So, but that game is really fun. If you if you're looking for something, you know, really a, like a light indie game to check out, it might be worth at least take a look at it and see if you'd be interested in it because it's got that of a phone Oregon game. Trail, yeah. and then it's got this top down sort of um, kind of like the Escapist, I guess, but it's it's more like a dungeon crawler when you're in that top down. But you're these little pixel dudes, and and you create like you the characters are random with random traits and all that kind of stuff. So, like, and then you meet people along the way, and they become part of your party, and they might leave your party, or they might turn against you, or they might be good for you, or help you out with something. Sometimes uh, one of the crew members will leave, and he'll be like, "Hey, I, I got to go and do this other thing," but. Here, I'm going to show you how to do, because I'm good at mechanics, so I'll show you this mechanic thing, and he'll level up your mechanic skills before he leaves. So then you might, your car might last longer if and not break down as quick. So, okay. But yeah, and, uh, Death Road to Canada. I, I definitely see Streber's having a lot of fun with this. this game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it'd be good for that because it's like you know you're going through a little story and you can even like I like I said last week you can create characters as well right so like I made me and Kathy but now I try to I try to go with like just the random characters because I want to see what what different characters they can you know you can get and most of the time I find when I start out with myself and Kathy we both die before the end and then some other characters are in there. And it's been random a couple of times. I've actually showed up. I've been, like, one of the people that shows up when I don't start with myself. Like, my character will show up along the along the way <clears throat> trying to get to Canada. <laughs> so, yeah. That's cool. That's what about you, Gunny? What have you been playing? Uh, I played a lot lot more this week than I have in uh, recently in the last month. But uh, first one's Pinball FX3. What you been uh, playing in there? Uh, I've been playing a lot of, uh, uh, she's not Iron Man, but uh, the uh, the Hulk table. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was, like, I was like, I don't remember playing this. I, I didn't play it very often or too much the last <laughs> time. But, yeah, I, I, I think I did pretty good. I, I'm i not that far from you, actually. Oh, yeah? When I fired up my second game. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm actually pretty close to the <laughs> top of my friends list. I'll keep and my I don't have a lot of friends that play this. So, <laughs> I mean, obviously... <laughs> King Jiggly's all the way at the top. Um, yeah. <clears throat> or I don't even know if he's been playing that table, but uh, I don't. One yeah, he, actually, he focuses on he focuses on a table at a time, and he'll yeah. like just play that table until he gets like a top one hundred score and unlocks the achievement stuff. So he but, might not have played that yet. Um, maybe I actually, should have mentioned. Speaking it, of you know? pinball effects three, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you should have just right? your mouth. Speaking of Pinball FX3 and the fact that Wingman's here, Wingman, I beat your uh, your Star Wars score that you you had. I, I um, killed it. <laughs> oh, I think sure you had you like did. forty I, something. I, I think you had forty, and I got like over a hundred. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't stand along. Yeah, yeah, that was that's a fun table though, man. I really like those those new Star Wars tables. They're pretty fun. I didn't, and I, I I didn't play the new Star Wars table. Well, maybe I played one of them, and I noticed also that you know how everything's kind of that cross play on Windows. Yep, and that's kind of like where I like to play the pinball FX games because this TV is just too large to play those kind of games, or it's just I'm constantly trying to follow that ball. And I think since it's not really so much you know since you own most of them. It doesn't cross over to the Windows side of things. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. The game share doesn't work with Windows. But I think if I play the game on Xbox, it'll then kind of trigger something on the PC. I don't know. I haven't really uh, completed that experiment or not. You know what I'm talking about? Where if I play your games on your on scores Xbox, will be there, but I don't think you'll be able to download and install the tables. Yeah, I thought it did like the last time. When they first introduced Pinball FX3, it was like, hey, you don't own these, but you can play them. Just like it shows me on Xbox. But, uh, 
maybe I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, I love the. I just love all the. You know, I'm more of that Marvel table person, and um, oh, more aliens. Um, yeah, the aliens tables. I love those because I play those also on iPad. Yeah. So and they're and they're a lot more easier on iPad where they're a lot less forgiving. Where it's going to be, they're not going to go, you know, in the out sides of the table. Or it's like, oh, just kind of pop back in. You can just keep playing. So, got to get your a, nudge on, man. You got to know how to nudge that. Table. Yeah, and it's a little different, like like on an on an iOS device or you know, like a mobile device. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, you yeah, got to get is. your finger all the way to the top and swipe left or right. But uh, yeah, I love my Pinball FX3, and uh, a little more Far Cry Five. I'm just playing, you know, a mission here or a mission there just during the week and still having some fun with it. I got to a mission where you're supposed to kill three grizzly bears undamaged. And I'm like, oh, do I got to get the bow and arrow? Is that what I have to do? No. I went into the YouTube video. It's like, dude, just use like an assault rifle to kill the grizzly bears. And I was like, yeah, yeah. So I didn't I do like, that mission for that exact reason, because I was like, I don't have the bow and arrow, so I'm not going to bother with it right now. Nope, it says don't even bother, because you got to shoot it like four or five times. And when I did, when I when I did that, I was shooting it with the bow and arrow. Uh, it says, no, you can't pick that up. It's damaged. I was like, this is bullshit. So, yeah, just use an assault rifle. Um, wow. And the other thing was, is everything on the map shows black black bear locations wild black bear locations or something like that well on youtube it only shows like there's only two locations where you can go and then it's going to be all black bears but then the grizzly bear will randomly pop up and i couldn't get like the last location to randomly pop a grizzly bear and i just kind of gave up at that point i think after like waiting 45 minutes or fast traveling back and forth and I think the other one was get the skunks, but in that mission you you can get those pretty quick. After like this, the you know after the, be- the beginning of the mission, you just get the skunks really quick. But yeah, um, other than that, you know what I did? I just kind of walked around and just was walking through the woods and just doing random stuff and just making sure I'm like at each area so I can just get to you know different fast travel points. So yeah. Uh, the other game I played was Terra, that new... Well, it's not new to PC, but new to Xbox, that MMO on Xbox. Anybody else play this? Yeah, I saw you playing it. I was going to jump in with you, but uh, I saw you were in like a higher-level crew, and I was like, ah, I'm not going to bother. Well, some random person invited me to the party, and I was like, hey, I can probably get some insight on this game. But, um, yeah, so I think you level up fairly quickly. And it does remind me of that Neverwinter Nights style. It might be like also like Black Desert. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You start off, and it's I like the customer, the character uh, creation screen, and because you could be like a like a wood elf or a warrior, things like that. You can be more of a tank, and so yeah, I, I chose the more tank type warrior character, and and it's kind of cool because I I think I look like. Thanos in a way with uh, just you know different things you can you know things you can put on your character anyway but uh, yeah you just you, I don't like how the game starts out it's like oh go find this girl's doll repair the doll bring it back to the little girl you know stuff like that I was like okay I thought it would be more of that Neverwinter Nights like you know where it's like you got to go find the witch and kill her you know something more more interesting, but now it's, I guess it's more Japanesey than I thought it was. Uh, but it, either way, I think the the uh, aesthetics and the art style look pretty good. Um, yeah, but it just kind of gets you through each different little missions. You level up fairly quickly because I made it to level ten pretty fast within the first hour. Yeah, that's when I saw you. You were level ten or eleven or something like that. Yeah, because every <clears throat> every little mission that you complete and everything's so tightly you know, in that little map that you're in, it's, it it goes pretty fast, but the, uh, like the enemies are, they're, they kind of remind me how they're set up like a, like a Skylanders type thing. 
and I didn't. I only played that game with like they when you know back on the 360, where it's not they're not all trying to attack you at once. They're kind of spread out, so you can just kind of walk up to them and use your sword and do special moves and attacks on them. So it does have that real time combat, and it it is not not as fast as like a Neverwinter Nights game, or at least not with the uh, the uh, heavy character that I'm using. But yeah, it's uh. I tried to go back to it. What happened was I think I walked away and then it timed out on me for like this last mission that I was trying to do. There was like a boss fight where I was trying to fight this like sparrow type character. I thought, oh, this will be pretty cool. But then I went back and it was like, um, yeah, you want to continue that mission. Okay, yeah. But then everything was blank. So I'm like, okay, I must not be connected to the server. So I think I went in and went, you know, un- unfollow that quest or whatever. And when I went back to start the game, I was level one again. I was like, what the fuck? So, yeah, I don't know what happened. My character's set back to level one again. I'm like, maybe it's not saving, or I don't even know. So I'm like, I just I just quit at that point. <laughs> so I don't know what I did wrong. I'm like, I don't think I'm supposed to hit the save button unless it's automatically saving, like a normal MMO game. I don't know. Yeah, check it out. I think, is it free to play? I'm not sure if we paid for it, if it was on Game Pass or yeah. I'm not sure. Is that it guys? Oh, sorry, I can't hear you, Ryan. Anybody else? There he is. <coughs> no, I'm back. Okay. Wing, what have you been playing, man? There's only one game worth playing. Oh God, and, here uh, we go. And that is the one, the only Gems of War, <laughs> which I have been sitting here for the last hour plus playing as I'm listening to you guys. <laughs> you mean you mean you mean Gems of Snore? No, Gems of War, baby. Um, I play this just about every day. It's fun. It's a great little match three with lots to do. Yeah, uh, no, I, I get it's it. Fun. I get it. I mean, like I. I can't get into it, but I can see how it would be addictive and fun to play. Just not for me. I play yeah. it on my iPad. It's fun. I enjoy it. It is. Um, they did, if you haven't played in a while, they recently have done a new update. So now there's like, there's a lot of stuff in it I don't even touch. They added this thing about like pets. So you're trying to save these animals and you're going into battles against like different level. You start out at like a level 10 and 20 and 30. And I'm like, it's just crazy and saying how hard it gets. But, uh, there's, there's a lot to this thing. It, it, they continually improve it and add new content constantly. It's kind of cool. Yeah, um, that's cool. did play some more far cry five this week. I've been, uh, been playing with comrade uh, her and I have been working through several games, and uh, we I actually went and helped her complete the game the other day. And it was interesting because I had already beaten it, so I knew how it ended. So it was just kind of like just sitting there like waiting to hear the <laughs> her response to yeah. it. And uh, so that was kind of fun. But we we did get that one wrapped up for her. Um, I played... Are you, guys, Vern- are, you, are you guys moving on to Dead Island again? i am been waiting to go to Riptide, so I think Riptide will be next, hopefully. I do own uh, Riptide, Wing, so I might jump in with you guys again like I did with Dead Island. Okay. Just every once in a while. All right. I'll definitely let you know. Um, if you see us playing, definitely you hop on. Join yeah. us for sure. Hopefully we'll have less connection issues. That was our I, biggest problem last time was I could never connect to you guys. Yeah, that, that game had issues even yeah. back when it was originally released. And I, I think Riptide had the same issues, yeah. I, I, it seems to me. But we'll see. We'll try. We'll get it figured out. So, um, Gunny, Far Cry 5 is, is a great game. Keep at it. Um, it's a lot of fun. There are some issues. I did get all the achievements in that game. Uh, I spent a lot of time. Fish- oh, in fact, let me pull this up because I thought I was going to. I'm going to probably share this tomorrow. Um, Let's see, where did that go? Let me pull this up in my email. I got an email from Ubisoft 
and they're like, oh, you completed, you know, and I was like, yeah, I completed this a long time ago. But they actually broke down, like, the hours. Uh, the amount of time that's some things. So my total t- no, this wasn't, I beat the game quicker than this because I've done co-op as well. But uh, I thought this was interesting. My total time played, according to them, was 52 hours and 33 minutes. That's how much time. And I've, I've got more in since then. But I also caught 772 fish. Holy which, shit. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I was like, really? Because there's, <laughs> I know I did a lot of fishing when I was done with the game. I was like, you know, the, all the achievements are, you know, you can do it. There's just some investment into it. But I was like 772 fish. I that was a lot more than I ever thought that I'd done. I was like, wow. Uh, Jeez, they said my I'm total. At... Huh? I was gonna say I think I'm at 20 fish right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna be fishing a lot if you want to get all the all the achievements in the game. You will be doing a lot of fishing, but and, and I can tell you with Far Cry 4, which I loved, I. I actually went after those achievements because I really wanted to just take in every aspect of that game. The only ones I didn't get, and I think I mentioned it last time you were on here, Mark, was the uh, something in co-op. So I still I still want to go back and play those on Far Cry 4 to get those achievements that were like co-op based. Okay. I don't think I've... If I got four. I think... I don't think I have four because I was game sharing at the time and my game sharing partner had it. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, I would do that with you. But um, yeah, that's a lot of fish. And then um, my total kills, which this now this surprised me. Now you consider I caught almost a thousand fish. I only killed forty two hundred people in the game. Like I thought it would be a lot higher because you spend so much time like shooting people. Yeah. I also don't think that that doesn't include. Um kills that your your companions make i don't think so <clears throat> like if you if you have companions with you and they're getting kills right those don't they count get those. yeah then uh i had 993 headshots <laughs> wow nice. yeah but i yeah that i'm waiting for the season pass stuff to start coming out so i'm excited about that but it's a fun game uh, if you need help hit me up i'll i'll run through it with you it's uh I really like it a lot. Yeah, I think I just, I think I goofed when I, because when I went to the YouTube video, because I was like, what, what is going on? I couldn't figure out what it was. And I wonder if other people were having problems with that because there is no real brown grizzly bear locations. They're only, they have to spawn or something like that. You know, because the, the normal game just has the black bears. And I think they were saying like, oh, you should have just waited in that area after you got the skunks and went up like this little trail and the one would have would have spawned i'm pretty sure that there is a grizzly bear area i could have swore i found one and um and got that I, i'm yeah and i i probably should have searched other videos for it but i just ended up like i think just exploring and i think that was where i just kind of like wandered off I'm like, oh, yeah. maybe I did get back to the mission because I was <laughs> just doing non-mission stuff and exploring every inch of the map just to check everything out. Yeah, but, it's it's a really well done. I mean, it gets by the time I got to the third boss area up in the north, I did not care for those side missions. I thought those were lacking. Um, the wolf feel like, people, wolf. What are they called up there? The wolf gang. Uh, the white tails. White tails. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I'm avoiding like, that area. Like, oh, this is so lame. Yeah. This is so cheesy. The white tails are going to defeat these people. It's like, the white tails got their asses kicked, obviously in the first place. So how could they defeat these people? <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, it 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 that part I thought was like the worst was the northern area. It that was. was I thought the weakest part of the game. But uh, again, I put a lot of hours into it, so maybe I was just getting kind of burned out at the same time. That's but. the part, Mark, that I can't get past. I'm just like, I, every time I go up north, I'm like, I just don't want to do any of this stuff. Just so, blow like, up. Just, just play the story. Just play the story. Yeah. Um, you got to see the ending, man. Yeah. Wow. 
You got to. It's it's. Oh, I feel like I don't not, care. Anymore. It's not what you're gonna. That's not what you expect, man. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect that ending either. I was like, what the I know. fuck just happened? Yeah, it was... I, exactly. He's like, holy <laughs> crap! You know, it's just like I I was mind blown by what happened. So yeah. Um, I you know you gotta you gotta finish it, Ryan. It like I said, just stick to the story. Do it in co-op. It'll go probably a little better if you're not in yeah, co-op. Yeah, maybe I should try get that. Your companions. Get get those companions out. Use them and don't try not to get sidetracked on the side missions and stuff. Um, just stick to the main story and get through it. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I found also when I'm fishing and hunting, I've opted for the guy in the airplane and and. Because so, I, I thought I unlocked the perk to have two people, but I was like, man, I must have chose, like, the hero perk or whatever it was. So I've just been keeping the guy in the airplane, and he's been keeping the skies clear for me. Because they yeah. spot you, like, in the deep woods of once, when you're trying to hunt a deer. Once you take <laughs> out the bottom left, the southwest part of the map, you you won't have problems with the planes anymore. They'll be randomly right, here and there, but once they're, that's gone, the planes are gone. For the most part, yeah. So I'm in Faith's area now, and they're still. That's trying my to favorite area of the me. game. I thought that yeah. was the best one in the game. That area. Yeah, me too. It's good. Me See, too. I like. I actually like John Seed's area. John uh, Seed was cool. I enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Say yes. Yeah. <laughs> Say yes. Yeah. I. No. Yeah. But Faith's area was pretty cool too, because all of a sudden you're like. Oh, there's a wolf coming at me, and all of a sudden it's like, oh no, it's a freaking moose. Oh no, it's a freaking grizzly bear. It's a, it's a honey <laughs> badger. Watch out! Yeah, I think it'll eat your foot off. <laughs> hate those things, man. But that was pretty trippy, man. It was like, yeah, yeah, this is messed up, you know. I've never in my life taken drugs, but I can imagine, like, okay, I think I kind of get what what that would be like. You know, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't take drugs if this is what it's like, man. Yeah, and it's, it's I, and I and I get it where. I kind of, kind of get where the game is going when you get in the boat with the U.S. Marshal, that whole cutscene, and he's just going off about you know how you really need to like try this drug, you know, like but that's really what he's trying to say, like, <laughs> like what? Can I get out of this boat now? Yeah, good game. I'm still, I'm still, you know, just uh, trying to finish it, but. Same time, explore every area of the game. Yeah. Um, so I got two other games I played. Uh, I did I did purchase Burnout Revenge. It's backwards compatible. Uh, played some of that. Mainly I got it because I love Crash Mode. Uh, this is a game my wife and I used to pass the controller back and forth on and try to set yeah. like the higher here. scores. And it, it was like it, it would be groups of us all sitting on the couch. And yep. just like do a crash, pass the controller. They do a crash, pass the controller, and it was just like sitting there all day long, just passing controllers, doing different intersections. Man, I miss that shit. I, don't, I, don't, I need yeah. to go back. How much was that wing? Ten, like bucks. 10 bucks. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Well worth it, man. And I was playing the races and stuff, and I was just like, oh my gosh, I forgot how fun this game is. Um, it, it's a blast. It's a really good fun racer. Yeah. I highly recommend it. You know, uh, games don't have to have bleeding edge graphics. They just have to be fun, and that's what this is. I mean, that's right. It's a 360 game, so you know it's not going to be like Need for Speed or whatever. Not going to be a Forza title, but it is a lot of fun. And takedowns are just so much fun to do. <laughs> yeah. So love it. And then the last thing I've been playing. Uh, I think out of sheer boredom lately is Homefront the Revolution. Why? Tell me why. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm bored. This game sucks. It's a terrible game. It's glitchy. The story sucks. The The gunplay sucks. Everything about it sucks. But I'm playing it because I just don't... I don't know. It's an open world should... shooter... They should have stuck with the original format of the game. I thought the original game was good, and they could have built so much on that story that they completely missed the mark. I think they were trying to go for like a 
a Destiny type game, or not a yeah. Destiny, but like and a that, uh, a division problem. type game, where like it's an open world connected, you know, with your co op partners in the world or whatever. Like they're going for that, and that was not what Homefront the first game was. The, the first game was good. No, the story the first game was, was good. Very linear. It was yeah. a very linear I, pathway. You just the multiplayer walk was it. good. And that's the problem. Everybody wants these open world games now. I don't want that. I didn't want that for that game, at yeah. least. No, I didn't either for that game. When I played the little bit of that game I played, I, I did not like it at all. No, neither did I. And, like I said, the first one had a good story. Like, it, it made complete sense. You know, King Jum Il died. His son took over. His son went crazy. He unified the Koreas. And then once he unified him, then he launched nukes at the U.S. or an EMP or something. He took out the power grid. Then he started invading other countries. Like, first, he invaded Japan. Then he invaded, you know, other countries over there in Asia. And then they launched an EMP against the U.S. And then they invaded the United States. And then made complete sense. I'm like, oh, fuck, this story is, like, it makes sense. You know, and they took over everything. They, you know, the U.S. Army was losing the war because a lot of the technology is based on electronics. And when you get EMP'd, well, your electronics are down. So, like, they were easily able to invade. The story made sense. There was a resistance that built up. It was good. And then you got this one where, like, in this one, they completely remade that whole story. They just got they got rid of the other story. Like, the other story doesn't exist in this one. Because when I, I launched this one the other day. And uh, the story is completely different. When you watch the first intro video, it's like a completely different thing. It's yeah. like they said, screw the first story. We're going to make a whole new thing. And it made no sense. It just did it. I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> yeah, see, I didn't, I didn't like the original Homefront. I remember I had, I think I game flight it or something back in the day. But mm-hmm. um, right. I did not like the story. I never got in. I did beat the campaign. It was like four hours long. I remember it was really short, which was good because the game sucked in my opinion. But I just didn't like it. And I never did the multiplayer. It just Dude, The multiplayer was good. Me. It was I it was solid. Care for it overall. The multiplayer but, was this thing. They brought this this thing with like kill streaks, like Call of Duty, right? But they brought well, like uh, what Call of Duty did? I think Modern Warfare Three did it, where like you could die, but it didn't matter because you were building up points and you saved up the points to call in different types of kill streaks. Like you could call in a tank, you could spawn in a tank, or you could spawn, you could call in like a a predator drone missile you can call in an airstrike you can call in a helicopter you can call in different things with your uh with your points you can like drop armor for your teammates so like they could pick up some some better armor plates to put on um you can call in a uav th- things like that i thought the multiplayer was solid and it's just it's a shame they, they fucking completely got rid well, of the you know first what I, game. Don't, I don't understand is remember remember i played this when it first did it come to xbox or i got it free on pc or i don't remember Mm -hmm. but either way i was like man this is boring like the shooting is okay but i think maybe they got to a point in development where they're like yeah let's do multiplayer and and possibly out of co-op mode oh shit we're out of money single player just go go up shoot (laughs) people shoot enemies it's it's, it's a a bad game i think but then it just kind of sucked and then they were like you know what Let's do this in 4K HDR and put it on Xbox and PS4. Well, can anybody say polish a turd? Because that's... I don't even <laughs> think it's... Is. is it in 4K HDR? I no, I no. don't think it is 4K HDR. Yeah, this I is... saw them do an update. I thought really? it was updated. Uh, yeah. It doesn't look like it's 4K HDR. <laughs> it doesn't look that good. I've, it doesn't look good. I've, uh-oh. I, I, I didn't test it, but... It's, it's an good. enhanced game. It is. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah, well, so I've it looked worse it on my but... other console. <laughs> I don't know if worse. it's 4K HDR, but it is enhanced for the X. So. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Well, there's that. Uh, I think the thing that keeps me going on it is I actually like the open world aspect that I can kind of just like when when I'm not able to complete a mission or something I'm like all right, I'll just go over here and attack this strike point or I, I can do something else and it's interesting because back in the day i used to love just linear shooters mm-hmm. just walk through shoot stuff and i think this is, game has really brought forth the fact that i've really changed over the years i really do prefer i used to hate open world games <laughs> and now i really enjoy them because i can kind of go and do what i want because that's you all know? you've played this whole generation's open world games <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, I guess that's... <laughs> Good, uh, They've got you used to like, it now. <laughs> well, like Crackdown, I'm so excited for Crackdown Three. I can't wait, and yes. uh, I love that. Just I can go and do what I want and have fun or take different missions on. And I think that's why, you know, right now I'm starved for something to do. I've kind of lost interest in a lot of things. Hmm. And I, we need, you know, it's that drought that's kicked in. You need God of gaming, war in your so life. it's like, well, this is something, and I, it's something to play that's. Not the yeah. same thing. No, that's it's funny the you only said reason that. I'm working through it. It's funny <laughs> you said that because that's the only thing that's really been that I've been God of able War to man. Play lately. It's God of War. It's like everything else. <laughs> I try playing something else, and I'm just like, nope, nope, yeah. nope. I don't want to play. This. God of nope. War feels like Tomb Raider had a baby with like Rise Son of Rome. <laughs> Tomb Raider, Rise, Uncharted. <laughs> yeah, it's all in there, mixed the in together. The Last of Us, it's all in there. Everything's in there. Like they just. They, you could definitely tell that the Santa Monica team went over to the Naughty Dog team and said, hey, we need to borrow that climbing mechanic from Uncharted. And then they went over to the Last of Us team and said, hey, we need to borrow yeah. this uh, this kid, yeah, this thing. this partnered little kid mechanic in the game. We need that. So they took that from them. You know, they went to the different studios at Sony and said, hey, we need to borrow this, 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 and this. And they just put it all together, and it, it works. Yeah, it God. works really well. Really, really, <laughs> really well. Uh, so good. Believe it or not. Anyways, we talked that enough. Sounds, about that God sounds like Sony, no, you know, not coming up yes. with anything new or original, Making just same borrowing from everybody else and repeating. It works it though, we man. Formula. It's so good. Well, like I said, they went to that developer who made, you know, help yeah, make Bloodborne. So for how long, Jesus? How this? long will it work? That's for the, the entire, thing, right? it's worked for the last twenty hours that I played of the game. So it's doing uh, but, a pretty damn no, good no, job. No, no, no. But I mean, Jesus. I mean, I mean, like, how many more games can they do that? Easily, with? they and could do it with so many more games. I think they I got the formula down. I don't know, but they that. got the formula down. They could do it with you a know, lot of games. I think it's funny how, like, you know, what was it? Just six months ago, Jesus sold his PlayStation. I talked did. about how much it sucked and how they're <laughs> terrible and how all they, they every game is a. A repeat. They just reuse the same formula, and now it's like he's back. And Xbox sucks. They got nothing. Sony rules. <laughs> Everything they do is perfect. It's like, dude, it's good. I changed now, my opinion. Sony move controller is the best controller out there. Best on the market. Best more press controller. Yeah, and then he got PSVR and played that for like two weeks. It was and good. Touched against it. <laughs> We need God of War and like, PSVR. Just like I said would happen. <laughs> I'm waiting for that mega PSVR game that's going to come and hit this fall. They're going to announce yeah, something for it. Keep waiting. You keep <laughs> waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, is that all you played, Wee Man? Because I got that's a it. few more games here on my list. So, guys, I went back this week and I bought... Well, I didn't buy. I already owned Fight Night Champion. I, I installed it last night because I was like... It just appeared on there. I was like, you own this. Install. I was like, yeah, because I love Fight Night games, too. The, the, Man, those I miss Fight them. Those awesome. the I miss those games. No, no, no. The Fight Nights are better because they don't have the stupid grapples and the lay on the floor and hold LB and press Y. Like, this shit is, you you punch with the stick. You, punch like, move the stick. The stick and, it, yeah. and you feel the power when you, like, do a perfect uppercut. You, boom, the dude hits him and it's like, yes, and you make him bleed. It's so good. I'm playing the, the story minute, mode. Jeez. Is that backwards compatible? Yeah. Or are you playing? That's no. the 360 game. Yeah, it's right? a 360 game. It just came out backwards compatible this week for Xbox One, the Finite Champion, the latest one that they made. And um, so playing it last night, I went into the the story mode because the game opens up with you doing. It's like a Madden game where it opens up with the game already going, and then it tells yeah. you like, do you want to continue the story or do you want to go to the main menu? And I was like, no, continue the story. <laughs> so I'm playing the champion mode where you're playing as Andre Bishop. This guy who uh, got his career destroyed by a, a like some dude set him up, sent him to prison, destroyed his life. Now he's doing like a comeback thing, and he's gonna get into boxing again. All this stuff. Um, the story is pretty good, and I and I already beat it once. I know I have because I have all the achievements for it. <laughs> but I'm playing it again, and I love it, dude. The co the fighting is so good. It's just. You know you got yeah, three man. minutes and you can knock this person out, but you know sometimes you go down and you're like, oh fuck, am I gonna be able to get back up? And you gotta line up the sticks to get back up. It's so yeah. good. Um, I forgot about that lining up the sticks. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the game is good. Oh dude. man, that yeah, those. I wish EA needs to make another one. They of those. do. I, I really think they should get rid of. Uh, 
they should get rid of the UFC or maybe alternate between them. You know, just release one yeah. one year, release yeah, yeah, yeah. one the next year. So you can keep both yeah. fan bases happy. I just think they noticed that the UFC has gotten a little bit bigger than boxing these days. But boxing is still a yeah. big thing, dude. I, oh. You know, when, when you see big fights in boxing, the people that watch, it's ridiculous how many people watch these fights when Floyd Mayweather fights against certain boxers. You see the people in droves oh, no. talk about it, you know? So... They really need to bring that back and, and just bring modern boxers into it. You know, bring the classic boxers because they've always had the classic ones and they had Muhammad Ali and all those boxers in there as well. Bring that back, EA. Such a good game. Um, but playing that last night, it was fun. I yeah, also how could they microtransaction that easily? The online, yeah. the online, yeah, suits or yeah, yeah. They had an colors. online mode for a finite champion actually, and I was that? looking at that because that's. I think 40% of the achievements are for online, like defeat another player from another gym, knock out a, an opponent 5,000 times, uh, play an online match against your rival gym, all this like other bullshit. I was like, the, the online was really hard in that game. I remember I tried it once and got my ass kicked, just like in any other fighting game. <laughs> but uh, I played PUBG last night as well, guys. I went back into uh, regular PUBG. I, I was doing good. I got a few matches where I made it to like third place, second place on first person mode solo. Um, and that game is good. I, I'm, I'm just excited for the new Miramar map, which comes out next week on the 24th. They've confirmed it. It is coming out next week. So stay tuned for that on the Xbox. Um, and uh, But another game that I played this week was uh, Laser League. And this is a game oh, made well, by... It's uh, like, man. I, I saw this. I downloaded it. Now. It's by... It's made by 505 Games, so those are the guys who are published by them. They're the guys who published uh, the Payday games and all those like weird games, you know, like random. They're like a B publisher, I would say, C publisher. They don't publish major games, but they publish all these weird like other little right. games. And they published this one, Laser League. Um, it's it's okay. <laughs> so there's what do you it's do exactly? exactly. Um, it's like Teams of Three or something like that? Teams of Three, but I've always played duos. I haven't played the three versus three yet I will, i've only played duos um i haven't jumped into the 1v1s or the 2v2 but anyways uh so when you jump in you spawn in you pick a class you can be a hunter which has a blade you can be a guy that has a shield you could be a guy that steals orbs and you could be a guy that uh becomes invisible and you can go through the lasers anyways you spawn in you have like a top-down view of the screen it's like in a big arena, you know, like all these, like, it looks like in Japan or something, because it's always like Seoul, South Korea, you know, Tokyo, Japan, it'll say where it's at or whatever. And you spawn in, and these guys are like digital holograms, they spawn in, and you have to run around with your character, and like, there's these little bars that are running, like, little, like, they're like poles, they're in the game, they're going around the, the, the arena, Little you lasers, run, aren't you they? run into them, and it activates your color of laser, so it'll activate like a blue laser or orange laser. And, like, some of them will, like, shoot across the arena. Some of them will, like, just, like, block the entire arena off. And they'll start moving slowly towards the other, like, the other area of the arena. But you can run outside of the arena. So, like, let's say, you know, you have a square. You you, you could, you know, there's a laser coming towards you from the front. It has the whole area blocked off. You can run backwards into the wall and you come out on the other side of the arena. You know what I mean? So you can run into the yeah. walls and come out the other side or whatever. The opposite side of whatever you run into, um, it's it's okay. I played a few matches of it. I'm level three now or level two. It takes a lot to level up, and I've played against people that are like level forty. <laughs> That's how like these people play a lot of the game. So I was playing against those guys, and they're really good. Um, but it's just that like you have to activate these lasers to kill the other players, and whoever wins. Uh, best out of three matches. You have to score three points to win the match, and it's the best out of three. So, like, if you win the first two rounds, you win the match. If you win the first and the third round, you win the match, just like that. Um, it's okay. It's not the best game ever. I'm kind of glad they put it on Game Pass because this game would have gotten no attention had they not put yeah. it on Game Pass. It, would it be being bad. a multiplayer game, too, it needs, yeah, well, big time. needs a player base. Um, right, so... It yeah. does have, like, training modes and single-player modes. I, I think I've seen those in there. I haven't tried them. I'm assuming they're more like training simulations or something like that. I haven't yeah, tried I mean, them. if you bought the game for a single-player purpose and went in and found that, yeah. you'd be pissed, right? Like, 
Um, but I, I like the premise, you know, this like arena fighter, like these people are, you know, like, like I said, the invisible guy, like if there's a laser coming towards you, you can activate his ability and he's able to go through the laser, you know, cause he's invisible or whatever. He becomes like invisible. He goes through the laser. There's another guy that could steal the, the lasers. So like if you're running and there's a laser coming at you, that's orange and you're blue, you activate his ability and it switches the lasers to blue. There's certain drops in the map or in the arena that drop that are like, uh, kind of like perks or abilities that activate once you step on him or once you grab him. And like one of them is like ultra mode or something where like it activates all the lasers that are not activated to your color. So they just <laughs> automatically turns on all the lasers to blue. Like if you're, and you know, and it's really hard to like outrun them because you're just, you have nowhere to run because all the lasers are blue. So you're like going to be dead right away. Um, and there's a, like another one that like, it's like an ability where you steal all the other people's lasers. So like if there's a, you know, the other team has their side of the arena, it's orange and they're just over there hiding in their lasers. You can act, you can pick that up and it'll change all of theirs to blue all of a sudden. And then they're dead because they cannot run them. Um, so pretty much that's it. <laughs> the game is called Laser League. I mean, if you have Xbox Game Pass, try it on there. Try for free. Don't buy this. I cannot recommend you buy this. Like you are going to be pissed off. I don't, even, I don't even know how much it costs. Probably I twenty bucks. <laughs> so why even download it? Uh, just to try to maybe you'll like it. It's like a game. I think it's almost like Rocket League, where yeah, if some you're into people, those arena kind of yeah, games. Some people will like it. But some people top won't. Down, right? Yeah. Always top down. Always top down. It's more isometric, isn't it? It's kind not like of. Straight it's, not, not, it's not straight top down. More like, yeah, like it's like a, at a tilt. Yeah, you can kind of yeah. like, yeah. But, I mean, the music is cool. There's that. Uh, and the announcers are kind of cool. Uh, they have all these character, like, profiles. You can, you make your own profile right on there. And you pick, like, an icon for your profile. And there's all these pictures of, like, the people in the game. Like, the, the con. The, the players or whatever the contestants and they're all asian <laughs> they're, they're all asian they all look like they're asian i'm like why is there like no white people in here or like no, you know, there's no up? hispanics in here nothing like it's just all asian i'm like okay well i guess i'll pick this asian person because they look cool i guess i don't know so <laughs> it's kind of like the the highest top played game in tokyo right probably <laughs> you know? and uh once you rank up certain abilities, like you can get sponsorships from certain corporations, and they'll provide you with better armor, better abilities, you know, so you can get maybe hit by a laser a little bit and survive. So there's that. Like I said, I played against level forty players, and there was a lot of playing against the same people over and over. I don't think they have a big player base. So, yeah, check it out if you're interested in what I just heard, but. Some people, like I said, are going to like it and some won't. Like the people that I like that like Rocket League and shit like that will like this, I think. If you don't like Rocket League or those types of games, you're not going to like this. It's just not going to be for you at all. I probably won't. I'll probably try it, but I'm not a I didn't I'm not a big Rocket League fan. Only yeah. cuz I cannot control that car. Probably just yeah. need to play it more. For sure. He'd be good like Clint Thiel. <laughs> and in other news, guys, I've had a big problem this week. I need to talk about uh -oh. this. Big problem. My Xbox One Elite Controller is shit. It is shit. Uh -huh. I will never buy another Elite Controller from Microsoft again. Ever. Oh, that's wrong. Right. Yeah, yes, you will. Look. Look at, the, okay, look at this. The version you see this? Just look at exactly. this. Exactly. Look at that. Look at that. What the hell are you Wait, doing to your see. controller? Jeez. These these RB and LB brackets, I've looked it up, and they say that these LB RB brackets are from the original Xbox One launch. They're the shitty ass brackets from the launch. They're using them on their Elite controllers, and, and people are having to replace these themselves because they're just shit brackets. And, and I don't even I contacted support, and they're like, "Well, you're you know you've had it for two years." I was like, "Fuck you, man! I paid 150 bucks for this shit." Like, your controller is shit. Look at this grip. It's coming off. I told them, like, you guys make Jesus, shit man. controllers, dude. Look at, look, look. Nothing wrong with mine. What the fuck? Nothing. What? How often do you use yours? Mine? I use mine a lot. Nothing wrong for with PUBG. mine. I use mine a lot, too. I use mine for PUBG all the fucking time. All the, all the time, my dude. Only, my only issue is, is I have uh, this, that wiggly stick. Yeah, I have. I have and I have that, too. Stick. Yeah. Like, this is a shit controller, guys. 
It is. I'm Same fucking here, pissed. Not. Come on. Not no, this is bo- it's a shit fucking controller. I went off on the mic because they were like, well, will you be considering purchasing a new one? I was like, fuck you. No way. I was like, I will never buy another one. I was like, I'll well, buy your standard fucking controller. I was like, I'll buy your fucking standard controller, but I'm not buying another Elite controller. I told him, fuck you. I was like, for 150 bucks and your shit doesn't even last two years, my original day one Xbox One controller is still around. How the fuck is that thing still going and my Elite has broken after two years? And, mind you, I don't use it for every game. I use it for games like PUBG, Battlefield, shit like that. I don't use it for every single game. When I'm playing regular other games like Cuphead or whatever other game that I'm playing, Quantum Break, I will switch off to the other standard controllers. This this is mostly for my multiplayer gaming, and it, it's fucked up, dude. And I even told the guy, like, how the hell is your RB button coming off? I was like, dude, what the fuck? They're like, well, we apologize for any inconvenience. We're going to talk to our hardware team. I was like, yeah, tell your hardware team your controller is shit and use better brackets for the RB buttons and LB buttons. I'm just saying, it's shit. Your I LB, don't know, like I said, Jesus. Your, man, wa- my, my controller watch, right when your LB no and RB breaks, you're going to remember me. Just Jesus remember fine. that. Well, you remember. Push mine, all day long. Mine, were all just, day long. <laughs> mine were just fine until the fucking thing came off. I was like, what? Because well, I kept pressing RB. I'm like, why is RB not working? When I'm playing PUBG or Battlefield to mark people, you have to press RB. I'm pressing it and it's not marking people. So what the fuck, Xbox? But you're right. I'll probably will buy the Elite version too. <laughs> and so will I cause I'm that Wait, dumb cause I'm that dumb I'll fall for their stupid we added a new thing and I'll fall for that stupid shit and USB-C buy it. charging yeah and something charger controller. No, no, no batteries I'll fall for that dumb shit but still I'm so mad at them I'm like dude like it's two years I told, and I even told the guy like my original controller still works that's five years ago I told him that's like five fucking years ago dude what the works. fuck? And it works I just fine. It it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I haven't used it as much, but it still works. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Yeah, you, like Brink, I, Brink says a, you can I fix that. Bit of a stick, Brink stick says you can fix that for $8. Down. And I'm going to do exactly what Brink said. I already looked it up. So I, I'm going to go to Amazon. I'm going to buy the new uh, grips back here. And I'm going to pop these off, put those replacements on. And I already looked up the RB, LB bracket replacements. And I'm going to have to buy one of those as well. That's like 9 or $10. Um, and I'm just going to take know, this thing apart. And just I'm going know, to Jesus, prepare. just know that I had, uh, thanks to Brink's recommendation, I did buy that, that blue faceplate. It, it kind of looks green in the camera, but yeah. it's actually a really pretty blue. So when I did replace those, which was easy, it did... The grip on the right side is actually coming off on. But but, but I mean, th- this is a sides. this these grips coming off, Gunny, are a common problem. It's because the way we hold them and our, you know we're, our hands are hot, you know, and, and the glue just starts coming off of these. Well, is things. my right hand sweatier than the left? It could because be because the, the mine's fine. My left is kind of coming off too, but my right is it's off. It's off. Well, I like, guess you now know which hand you use more yeah, often. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm a left handed person. <laughs> but um, but, but you can re- you can repair these yourself. They don't seem very hard to take apart. You just gotta pop these off, and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna yeah. try to, Go to repair YouTube, this myself. YouTube, there's a very easy video. Yeah, it shows you exactly is. how to take it off so, safely. I'm gonna replace the R- the brackets for the LBRB buttons, and hopefully replace the grips as well. And I should be back to good. Um, but like Can I said, you get it's a, a shame. Replacement for the stick, like to make that not. Um, close. I could, I could probably YouTube that as well. You could probably get a replacement for the whole thing, dude. <laughs> but, I assume uh, there's something underneath that isn't yeah, there. Yeah, isn't tied down. Yeah. Um, my stick drifts every once in a while. Mm. It's the one that's loose. That's the only issues I've had with it. But other than that, it's been solid for me. Yeah. But that's my problem with that controller. Um, so, yeah, I look forward to fixing it because it's shitty, man. I, I want to use it, and I can't because it's all broken. <laughs> like I said, my, my RB button is, like, coming off, dude. <laughs> well, Jesus, they're coming out with a version, too. Look for I don't it give a free, shit. I'll and buy it's going to be so much better and more improved. <laughs> what, are you going to have better glue for their grips? 
I would hope where so. Where you can stick in stick <laughs> with the pack ins that I've yet to have a problem with from That's true. Xbox One day one. You don't have an Elite controller, do you, Wingman? Nope, never bought one. Imagine I how for one. how mad would you be if your you your controller you paid 150 bucks for it, did this fucking shit did this? How mad would you be? So. That's You'd why I haven't bought cool. one. Why, why buy a... I don't see the point of the Elite controller. <laughs> no, it's good. This controller works enough for me. I love and you it. you do an Xbox no. podcast. Hey, I know. I, you would think you'd be the first one to buy one. <laughs> I, think he would. I thought he was going to at first. $150, dude. I can buy two games and still have money left over. <laughs> and, and I've got four, five, six of these friggin' regular ones around. Why do I need to spend 150 on another one? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I get that. But I'm telling you, when I bought my when I got my Elite controller... I fucking it feels so love good. it. It's so good. It's it, just the weight of it. it it's metal. Right. Yeah, it's it's I, it feels. I would more hope solid. so. It's I would rubbery hope you like it. until it breaks, wingman. <laughs> until it breaks, yeah, it's great until it breaks. <laughs> I mean, I guess, but like, I'm, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I've heard I've heard lots of problems about these elite controllers with the sticks moving and stuff, yeah. and yeah, I've had, know, that. I've had that. Rob, I think Rob. Rob got one, or Brun, Brun had one, that, and I think his was doing the same. So yeah, it's just like, done. I've never had a problem like that with the standard controller. Oh, so. I have. And <laughs> yeah, I did on the original Xbox. Problem one. And... What, what i got to say, though, is is these bag paddles do come very, very handy when you're playing multiplayer games like Battlefield, even PUBG, because with PUBG, I switch my guns with the Y back here, and I loot with the X on this one, and then the bottom two are the left and right on the D-pads, so I can switch the firing rate and stuff like that. It, that stuff becomes super handy when you're looting a house. You can just tap the X real quick. You don't have to move your thumbs. You just keep moving and tapping the X back there. You loot everything so quick. That's why people are always asking me, like, huh, how the hell did you clear that house so quick, Jesus? It's because I'm looting with this Elite controller, man. Mm. Just get good, bro. All right. <laughs> That's not getting good. That's like... You oh, you're saying, saying I'm cheating? You're saying I'm cheating? It's not getting good. It's you good, bro. Yourself. I improved you the fuck out of myself. Of hardware. I improved the hell out of my hands. They're super improved. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he enhanced his game. Yeah. Yeah. He went out and bought, uh, you know, super hands. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. well I, what I do remember, but it's kind of funny you mentioned that, Wingman, because I do remember back in the 360... These things were ban were bannable. Like, if you yeah. were caught using this on Call of Duty, like a controller with paddles, you would get uh -huh. banned from Xbox Live, uh, and Call of Duty would yes. ban you. Call of Duty would ban you for these controllers. And it's funny how Microsoft bought the company Scuff <laughs> that used to make those illegal gaming controllers, and now they sell them. <laughs> that, but I, I I clearly remember back in the day with people having like. They would talk about these paddles and how they were cheating, and I would be like, and I could see it because they would drop shot you and do things that you couldn't do with the regular controller as fast. Yeah. And then, and then I remember looking them up back in the day, and sure enough, back on the 360, they were like a hundred and and seventy dollars, two hundred dollars for a controller. And then four years, five years later, here comes out of Microsoft at E3 showing off a controller that has the paddles in the back. I'm like, that's cheating. <laughs> I totally remember that, but you do have a point in this kind of cheating. So, yeah. And the thing is, it's not, it's not, you know, then you get used to that, and you're like, oh, I'm I'm so bad at I'm so awesome at this game, and <laughs> then I, you play I've with got the regular... massive skills, and then I put a regular controller in your hand, and you suck, <laughs> yeah. you know? So it, it's not, you don't have the skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, do. And, and, I mean, I don't need to buy it, because I don't like competitive mm -hmm. gaming. I like cooperative, so, you know... It, it just suits me either way. Fine. Like that's not what I use it for. I actually just like the way it feels in my hand. I like yeah. the weight of it. I like the grips. I like that the top's rubbery. I like, you know, the whole feel of the the Elite controller is really nice. The weight, you like, yeah. uh, is unbelievable. It's like, like a you... metal controller. That's why it's yeah. not like yeah. a plastic. It's metal. It's, it's heavy and it feels sturdy. You know. Don't don't get me wrong. It's not. It's I have looked at them in the store and I've picked them up. I don't think I'd like the paddles on them. It, it, I think that I don't would even annoy use me. Them. See, we I man, that, I thought that until PUBG. I use it for it's, Battlefield. Take that it's back. It's the price that keeps me out of the. Of yeah, I get that. We I get man, that. if if they come out with the new Elite controller and they all of a sudden say, uh, the old Elite will still be on sale for a hundred bucks, would you buy it? 
not the. No, I wouldn't buy the old one. No. Would you buy? Would you buy the version two if they announced it at E3? I've, I've and heard too just... many problems with the old one. <laughs> what about? Okay, maybe a little off topic. What about the new Duke? I mean, that's just like a giant. No, or is that no, just no more of a rat? I have no shit. interest in that. No I think a hundred bucks as well. It's like for what? It. it no I, way. It's it's an, that's for people. And, it's, it's, and you have and it's it's ported, so ex- The reason it's so expensive is because it's got an LED screen in it. That's yeah. why. Which that's it. I can it boot up Hunter the Reckoning and see the boot up screen for exactly. the original Xbox. <laughs> I don't need to buy a controller. Yeah. And I did never like that controller to begin with. Me either. Oh, I have shit. small hands. Like, I don't... Yeah. Anyways, guys, I think we should take a break and then come back after the break. Talk about some news like Call of Duty. We'll be back! Messages. We'll be right back. Vengeful Jedi here, Horrible Gamer and patron of the Horrible Gamers podcast. Want to give the gamers an XP boost? Want to see the show level up? Then support the Horrible Gamers on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash horrible gamers. Don't be just another NPC, non Patreon character. Become a patron. Two gold, five gold, ten gold, twenty gold. It all supports the party. So game on. With the news and stuff. Let's talk, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that musical break. And now uh, we're going to get into some discussions real quick. The big news this week. The big reveal. Call of Duty. Blops 4. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. So they had their big event. Uh, the 17th, which was Thursday at like, I don't know what time. It was like 10 a.m. or something, Pacific time. They had their big event where they unveiled their multiplayers and their zombie modes and uh, their new mode called the Blackout. Uh, what? Do you, so first off, I don't know what your guys' thoughts on this are, but mine, uh, I, I was not impressed at all. I was like, this, this looks like every other Call of Duty, a lot like Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Except they just took out the wall running and the jumping on the walls and all that stuff. They just took that out. They took out the jetpacks and that's it. Like that's what it looked like to me. The guns sounded like like BB guns. They sound like they sound so shitty. <laughs> when the when the guns are shooting, I'm like these, these guns sound bad. I, I said that when Call of Duty World War Two came out. The guns sound bad. They don't sound like a gun would sound. Anybody uh, else notice this with the gun sounds? I'm, I'm sure yeah, Wingman does. Mark, I Mark, didn't did see you, the trailer. Yeah, no, I, but I mean in in World Call of Duty War, World World War Two, did you notice any different audio s- sounds different from the guns? What they sound more? They sound more like pea shooters. They don't sound like like it doesn't have the thud of a gun. Like in Battlefield, when you shoot a gun and you're shooting a big machine gun, it sounds like a big machine gun. In Call of Duty, the guns just sound like BB guns or something, like n- fucking Nerf guns. They don't sound as good. In my opinion, they don't. And, and and I play those with headphones on. I played it without headphones on. They sound kind of like shit. And, and that's what they sounded like to me in the trailer for Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Uh, they unveiled the three new zombie modes as well. As we now know, they have one set in, like, Roman Empire, Gladiators, or something like that, where you are in an arena fighting zombies without guns. You're going to have melee weapons like swords and spears and shields. and So they have that now, which I thought that was interesting how they unveiled that. But on top of that, they unveiled two other zombie modes. One will be set on a cruise ship 
where you'll be finding zombies in hallways, cramped hallways on a cruise liner, and uh, you have to do that. And there's another one set, uh, again, I think it's from another Call of Duty. Uh, I'm not 100% sure which one it is, but it's, it's another story from a previous Call of Duty, kind of like a classic zombie mode. And then, of course, they unveiled their blackouts. They didn't say much about blackout. They didn't say what the player count was for their battle royale mode or anything exactly. for that matter. They did, in fact, though, say it is their biggest map yet, which is, doesn't say much because the maps of no. Call of Duty are not no. big. But they did say you can fit 15,000 new towns in this map. Uh, Newtown is like yeah. Newtown is like a court. Newtown was tiny. It's though. like a a block. Yeah, like that's not surprising. <laughs> but uh, they I also like said not that large. They also said you're gonna have uh, the ability to use land, sea, and air vehicles in the multiplayer mode called the blackout. Mm. So, what are you guys' thoughts on all this? It's I gonna care. fail. I'm- I don't care at all. <laughs> no single player campaign. The, the the reason they said they have no single player campaign is because they focused their narratives on the blackout mode. The zombie modes are going to have more deeper stories. I guess that's what they focused their single player campaign on was the zombie mode. Because now you can play zombies by yourself and have AI partners instead of having like to play co-op with people or having to struggle by yourself to... Play the whole game by yourself. Oh, I like I like that. You can have now AI people that are going to be in there with you, fighting with you, alongside you, and you can set up like their uh, how. What do you what you call that? Like how good they are. You can set them, like, make them really good, or make them kind of like okay, or make them bad, so you can be a little bit harder for you. So you can set the difficulty on that. Um, so they have all these features now for Call of Duty Zombies, which was like I think their biggest. I think that's what they were focused on the more, most in this game because the, the the multiplayer added new classes. They have a, they now instead of having you heal yourself when you hide behind cover, you have to physically press L one or L B to heal yourself. You do not automatically regenerate health anymore. Oh. They say that this is a tactical change for the game to make it more tactical, to make it, you know, I guess harder for people to play or more competitive because now so you're I gonna... wonder if they're going to have like health packs, right? If I'm going to press L1 to heal myself, was that mean they'd be at, they're going to be adding some sort of healing system? We'll find out. Yeah, and then then of course they did say boots on the ground. That's their big thing. Boots on the ground. No more wall running or jetpacks. That was their big thing. Boots on the ground, guys. Mm. Yeah, I wasn't impressed by it at all. The engine to me looks dated as hell. It looks so dated. I'm like, why do you? How how is it that Activision has not invested in a new fucking engine? They've made so much money on this game. Why not spend fucking a hundred million dollars to make a new engine? Why not? Come on, guys, really. I just think it's shit that their graphics look like shit. Their sounds are shit. Yeah, and I and I, I know the trailer's out and I saw the link but I didn't I didn't watch it. You haven't seen it? The coolest no, trailer to me was uh the, the coolest one that I thought was the coolest was the uh the trailer for the Call of Duty zombie cruise ship. I thought that was the coolest looking one. But I was like still like this is it's gonna be lame. I'm not into zombies. I don't give a fuck about zombies. I don't care about you know, any, and, zon- anything zombies. I don't care. And uh, Brink in the chat was talking about how 35% of players that buy Call of Duty only to play the campaign. That's a huge loss of the player base. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I... I don't... Yeah. Uh, I think they'll still do just fine. <laughs> they will. Of course they will. Player only of game. course they and, will. Of course. It's Call of Duty. It's going to leave us, out, us 38% out, or those that just play the campaign. Which well, is I a like lot the of zombies. So. But yeah. I still want a campaign if I'm going to pay 60 bucks. Now, the, the, the key thing is, uh, I think people are expecting Call of Duty to unveil the Blackout Battle Royale mode at E3, you know? Either at, probably at Sony's conference because their marketing partner is Sony. Um, I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think the mode is even done. I don't even think, think. I think they have no clue what the fuck they're doing with that shit. They're like, 
I, I think the problem for them is going to be getting the player count. They're not going to be able to have 100 players in a map. Yep. Exactly. I don't think that's the thing. I think they just won't be able to do it. I think they're going to come out and say, like, we have 50 players in the map, and it's going to be faster paced than, like, Fortnite or PUBG. It's yep. going to be a fast paced Battle Royale. Is this. I, I'm, I'm curious also why this wouldn't be, like, a separate thing, this Battle Royale thing. Why they wouldn't just go, hey, you know, looking at this Fortnite and sell it for how free. It's free to play. They, and they will not do it's, free to it's play. It's massive and it's huge. And we should do the same thing. <laughs> because it's Call of Duty, it's easier to bundle it with the Call of Duty and sell it that way. Because you know you'll guarantee sell, sales of copies True. when Good you point. do it that way. You'll have a bigger player base, probably. Yeah, and I just the the thing what what I think is they're not going to show the battle royale at E3 as people are expecting. They're going to get more multiplayer trailers or whatever more zombie trailers they are probably going to have the zombie mode playable there um but i think the people that are going into e3 expecting to play um that game at e3 they're gonna they're gonna be disappointed they're gonna be like this, this doesn't work so yeah there's that guys yeah my my opinion on this is i remember reading where they were working on a campaign and they were unable to get it done in time but what i what i pick out of the story is that there's not a lot of people in their minds that play the campaigns and everybody's on Battle Royale. I think they took that team and said, scrap the story, get Battle Royale in it right now. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to be able to handle 100 players yeah. I, because they never have had large numbers in a Call of Duty game. Yeah, And you can say, well, it's because we want this certain style of game, but I think it's more of like the engine what Jesus is saying. It. They can't handle it in their game. I, I think they will come out with like a max of like 50 people. Yeah, And I don't think I it's going to be so ready cool. on launch day. I think they're, and if it is, it's just going to fail because I don't think they've put any enough time into it. Yeah, I, I think they've pivoted way too late. I think they saw the success of Fortnite and they were like, we need to get in on that. And then it's just too late. Like they at this point, relevant. Was, yeah, they need to stay yeah, relevant. And the thing is, is too fast, the, too the, soon. Call of Duty is the Call of Duty crowd. I don't feel is a PUBG Fortnite gamer. They're not. No, because it's more tactical. They, these people that play Call of Duty rank up, unlock stuff. They have their equipment. They go into battle with. They're not going to want to go into every match empty. Yeah. It's you know what I mean, and it's yeah. like because they want their perks. They want their right. Yeah, they want all that because that's what Call of Duty is known for is having all right. these different perks on your weapons and and, on your and they're going to have that in the in the battle royale mode. They're going to have the perks. I think they're going to have all that. So it's going to be a weird type of thing. And I think it's going to be way too fast paced for people that play PUBG or even Fortnite to want to try. I just I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I I could see. I mean, myself, I love like the Call of Duty. The, the movement, the player character movement, that to me, Call of Duty has always been the best example of the way to do a multiplayer. Um, I, I like the way the character moves, the way everything runs. It's real to me. It just works. Like Battlefield to me feels clunky. Gears of War feels clunky. Call of Duty has always been smooth, fast, easy, just like Titanfall. Imagine that it's the same guys. So I would love to have a Call of Duty battle royale. I think I would actually get into it. I don't play PUBG or Fortnite because, again, it's not really smooth uh, for me. And it's just this is like a way I play. So I would love to see this, but I don't think that they can pull it off. And I don't. I think they're going after the wrong crowd. I don't see Call of Duty people wanting to start a game where everybody has nothing. Because people build up. They've played this game for, what, 10-plus years? Where you rank up, you get all your best gear, and you go in and annihilate people. But yeah. I, I just don't see them flipping it where I can come in and be start off the game just as powerful as someone who's a level 185. You know, it's just because <laughs> yeah. they don't have a gun either, and I kill yeah. them because I find a gun first. You know, no, I don't think that's gonna I, happen. It just seems like it's a wrong crowd that they're aiming for. But yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, apparently reports say that call of, that team at Treyarch only started working on the Call of Duty uh, Battle Royale mode just last year. Yep. So uh, the game has been worked on for a couple years now. So I'm assuming, yeah, you're probably right. They did scrap 
the campaign to add this in. They were probably like, you know what? You guys working on the campaign, uh, stop that, and uh, we're making a battle royale mode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so sad. They're just chasing the money and not, yeah, I just. Yeah, yeah I, wa- I mean, I want it to be successful. I would love to see a Call of Duty battle royale that would be good. Might be, I might be able to get into that, but at the same time, I just don't think it's the right mode for this game. Yeah. But I could be wrong. You know, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and other yeah, I say, th- I say they stick with what they know and what they do best, and what and what their fans want. Yeah, and that's oh. that's classic Call of Duty. Keep going with that. Send me to Africa this year, and next year send me to Iraq, and or yeah, yeah, wherever it might that. be. And but keep everything that. there. I want my perks and. I want my character customization and really have that in the, in the regular multiplayer mode. They, it's just like Black Ops Three, like I said, without the wall running or jetpacks. That's the only difference. Because um, it and all looks what the same. makes it Black Ops Four? The name. That's it. Yeah, they're, they're, it's, I, it's just the name. It's There's nothing. Can, nothing else that's Black Ops about. It. It's just the name and the might zombies. Might as well call it Call of Duty's Flying Circus or something because <laughs> they could. It, it's a meaningless title. <laughs> I think they're going to have, you know what they're going to have, Mark, is just something like Call of Duty 4. Didn't they have these, like, co-op style missions that were not really a story? They were just missions, right? So I think they'll have Black Ops. They did add a new feature to the game, though, guys. They added a new feature called uh, Single Player Operations, where uh, a player can now go into a single player mission by yourself, you can do these like training missions that'll teach you the abilities of the different uh, classes or operators, is what they call them. Like so Rainbow so Six Siege. Up, oh, yeah, Siege. They just ripped everything off from Siege. Pretty much, yes, right. yeah. I, I think they see the success of Rainbow Six and how they're still going strong even three years later. You know, and I, I think they're like looking at that game and they're looking at Battle Royale. They're like, we're gonna just put the two together. Try to do something. Uh, I just don't know how that's going to work. But yeah, they, that's their big new thing. They said that they didn't get entire entirely rid of the single player experience. You can go in there and play as an operator, certain scenarios, and learn their abilities. So, yeah. And other news: uh, Battlefield Five reveal will be next week. Yes. Uh, so get ready for that, guys. It's going to be exciting. Um, so Battlefield Five, we're gonna get to see what they have to offer, and, and and I love how EA came out and said that they're not going to cut any corners or lose value in their game because they will have a full fledged single player campaign. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> so but, the the campaign gone multiplayer game gets rid of the campaign and the game franchise that was multiplayer. Non single player <laughs> now keeping your single player. Exactly, exactly. This is like so the reverse. But they'll both have battle royale nodes. I'm, I'll I think Battlefield. It. I think Battlefield could do it much better than Call of Duty with the destruction and the, they already proved that they could do big maps and, and large player accounts and lots of players. Yeah. So they're going to be able to pull it off. I think. Yeah, I think people are going to be thoroughly surprised of what. And I think when they ta- when next week, whenever Battlefield Five comes out with that. I think they're going to just show everything. I think they will show the Battle Royale mode. Damn, that is loud. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. In other news, uh, Skull and Bones, the Ubisoft pirate game that you may have forgotten about, it is now more forgettable because it will not release until possibly March of 2020. What? Yes, the game has been delayed for a long time. They said it was going to release late 2019, to as late as March 2020. So, <laughs> yeah. that? That's, uh, that's, that's I, we that is crazy. Article, a nothing. screenshot, nothing. I'm, I'm thinking they saw CFTs and they're like, oh, fuck this. <laughs> Don't. We got to make something completely different that they made, guys, because their game is not that good. Let's just make something different. But, yeah. Yeah, so the, hopefully that team is working on a little title um, that uh, is one of Mark's favorite games, right? What? What's that? The the Tom Clancy's uh, what's the? 
Oh no, I, I'm I'm assuming that the Tom Clancy team is a whole different team than the team working on the. You think so? Yes, definitely. Ubisoft, Ubisoft is huge, dude. <laughs> They're fucking yeah, insanely big. Studios. Yeah, they got studios all around the world, so they, I'm sure they have like the main studios working on Splinter Cell. And I don't even know that game will release this year. I don't think it will. I think it'll be a 2019 title. I think they might show yeah, it this year. Yeah, it'll just be announced, right? Yeah. Because they still got to build up the hype for it, right? They can't just re- come out at E3 and say, Oh, Splinter Cell, here's a trailer, and it's out in like six months. Goodbye, guys. Hey, no, they, they could have been working on it this whole time. You I'm, don't know. I'm sure they have. But I'm, I'm sh- I don't think it's done this year, and I don't think anybody wants to release against Red Dead. I, no, that's just what I don't Stay out of their way. Fucking Rockstar just <laughs> announces a game and scares the fuck out of everybody, and everybody's like, what the hell do we do now? Um, even really, even yeah. Call of Duty is launching in October. Yeah, which so it's like, never done. <laughs> so, you know, nobody wants to get in the way of Red Dead because everybody knows everyone's going to be playing that game when it comes out. And that's just crazy. Another news uh, Shenmue 3, the game that's exclusive, I think, to Sony, PlayStation. It's now been delayed to some unspecified date in 2019. Before it was supposed to release in 2017, which got delayed onto 2018, which is now delayed onto 2019. Uh, and I don't think Sony will be talking about this at their E3 conference because they already said what they're going to talk about at their E3 conference. So there's that. In other news, Cliff, Cliff Blazinski closed down his studio Cliff boss. TV. Boss Key Games is no more. He posted on his Twitter account that as of today, Boss Key Productions is effectively no more. So he said, uh, yeah, the other day, on May 14th, he just closed the doors for Boss Key. I feel bad because reading some of the replies on the Twitters, it seems like some of his employees had no idea that was going to happen. So they just closed the doors. You know, that's it. We're done. But we talked about him a couple months ago or even a month ago maybe a few weeks ago where we talked about his game Radical Heights that had just came out we were talking about how he kept chasing these games that are but not unique <laughs> you know he kept chasing the, the the fad and yes you know he chased the fad with the game before that Lawbreakers which didn't do very well at all the player count was so low that it wasn't even on the charts at some points you know seven was, people playing at any given yeah. time so, like, what the fuck do you do in that situation? So he tried to, he, he even admitted on the post, we tried to scramble and create a, our own take on Battle Royale. We took five months of hard work, and they released what they released, but it was too little too late, dude. It just didn't work out for them. Um, they said that Radical Heights will continue to be online for the future um, until some point. Whenever it shuts down, it'll shut down. It's crazy. Yeah, and also, I believe he also said on Twitter and that you know that that game was like a a last ditch effort for this studio. The yeah something Heights game, and which I haven't even played yet. But I don't know. I think he knew before that because it, this game just came out not too long ago. I just he didn't get the excitement that he thought he was going to from yeah. that well, game. Well, didn't it didn't do what he was hoping? Yeah, I just. No hype. And it's weird. It's weird to see that because I mean, you think of Cliffy and you think of Gears of War and how successful. inventive Gears of War was. So you think that he would come up with something new, you know, creative and new, instead of just trying to chase all these fads that are going on right now. Stop trying to. And it makes me think that maybe Epic was the creative behind everything, whereas and he Cliffy got the was just. Yeah. yeah, that's what yeah. I think. I, even when Brink was on a few weeks ago, he mentioned that, that yeah, there's a you know a point there where we see Epic doing all these things and they're being creative with the way they're handling Fortnite, and we see Cliffy B. And we like you guys are saying. I think Cliffy B got a lot of credit for he that he didn't deserve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know he got the he got the publicity, the credit. He was the guy driving the Lamborghinis to E3 and fucking being an asshole on the internet and. I just don't think he was as big as he thought he was. He's got a real chip on his shoulders, doesn't he? Yeah, he doesn't like the yeah. internet. <laughs> but uh, let's move on here, guys, to more news. Um, the Vita will stop being made by... Well, Vita cartridges are going to be stopped 
stop being manufactured by Sony. So pretty much the Vita is officially, officially kind of dead now. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Time, though. How are you going to share your Vita games? No. Oh. What oh. the heck? Whoa. <laughs> Don't oh. know. <laughs> yeah, I saw a GameStop today. You can buy Vita games half off. <laughs> yeah. Already on sale. Yeah. So that, that's kind of the Vita's been dead a while, guys. It's just this is a nail in the coffin for them. Um, okay, we'll see here. Uh, Nintendo, Nintendo Switch news. Um, so uh, apparently Nintendo is going to move towards uh, microtransactions. Um, this is kind of what this article is saying. That, that they just yeah they're gonna add. Micro, well, they're already adding microtransactions to games like uh, Bayonetta. Bayonetta. Uh, oh, the characters in the new Smash Brothers, I think. Fuck. Can't read this article. It's too long. Yeah, the new uh, Smash Brothers game for the Nintendo Switch will feature downloadable characters that are going to cost money. Dun, dun, dun. For five ninety nine each, you can buy Bayonetta, Cloud, and Ryu. Uh, but yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Anyways, more just more DLC bullshit news for Nintendo. I'm not gonna read this article. It's kind of lame. In other news, the Xbox may not have the best exclusives, but they have some of the best features, guys. Let's talk about some of the features this console has. So they have the best online network. Let's be honest, they do. Yeah. They yep. they've invested heavily in cloud-based uh, software such as. Uh, the cloud-based uh, gaming that they're going to use for, hopefully, Crackdown 3. <laughs> and not to mention, their cloud saves, cloud storage is all there. And Mixer, Mixer, their, their super lag-free streaming, is, it's pretty incredible if you think about FPL. it. Cause I, yeah, man, that yep. thing is crazy. Um, not to mention, Microsoft is the big player nowadays in backwards compatibility. When we think back, backwards compatibility in consoles, we usually think Nintendo, but Nintendo's kind of the the people that'll sell you it, and Microsoft is yeah. just like doing it because to do it, because why not? We're just gonna do it. We talked. We <laughs> talked about that last week. Yeah. How off I was yeah. Nintendo that. sells it to you. Microsoft kind of just gives it to you, and you have the option to buy the games if you don't already own them. But if you already bought them before in your account, they're just there. It's like it's just there. Mm-hmm. Download it, dude. And not to mention, Microsoft's backwards compa- compatibility is pretty cheap. Because even if you don't own the games, every game that they've released on that has been ten bucks. Yeah, every single one. There's not one that's been more than ten bucks that I've noticed. I don't know about you guys. Have you noticed anything that's more than ten dollars? I think everything is just ten dollars, huh? So and usually, usually, like when they announce like a bunch of them, you notice that. Those games are also in the deal, the deals with gold for that week for like even cheaper than ten bucks. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, you know. Yeah. So, and I mean, you can they, yeah. people shit on Microsoft all the time, but you know, you know, there's there's a lot of good that's in there too. You just need to fucking take off your Sony glasses and have a look at it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, PlayStation has tried to u- and bring backwards compatibility to their console, but they keep forcing people to pay into the PS Now, which is not that good because it's only streaming the game to your console, and that's yeah, um, depending on like your internet connection, it could be very three times bad. as more. Like, yeah, what is it? Thirty bucks a month or 20 something? Twenty something ridiculous? bucks a month? Yeah, like yeah. And Nintendo, of course, month, yeah. Nintendo, of course, will make you pay into their online infrastructure to use their virtual console um and that's their new online service releasing in september so they're going to make you pay for that as well uh, microsoft with the other hand it's just like yeah, look it's 20 dollars a year yeah that's pretty Nintendo. cheap yeah it's pretty cheap yeah, yeah but you're getting nes games wing like it's not like you're oh, getting oh i know i'm just i'm i'm not saying anything about it but i'm gonna buy into it because i got an email from them the other day and they listed there's like Super Mario and Doctor Mario. And there's there's a bunch. <laughs> Wingman, like, these Wingman are great. The for these Nintendo. are going to be great for the Switch. These are going to be fun games. I agree to play with on the you. I agree with you, Wing. <laughs> they are going to be good games for the Switch. But like, why? Why are you doing this? And and let's just be honest. Everyone is used to being able to play online for free already. It's been way too long. They should oh, not for Nintendo. This long to release yeah, this. for Nintendo. Yeah. And 
And like people that have bought like Mario Kart or you know Splatoon or you know all these games that are that have online functions that they've been playing for free all this time are going to be pissed off when they don't like they they're probably not like us that are like keeping their eye on the news and you know right. all that kind of stuff where all of a sudden they're going to go to play their game and it's going to say no you got to pay more money so that you can play it people are going to get pissed I it's still so. super cheap twenty dollars a get, year yeah, is super nothing. cheap yeah, was... compared i mean Maybe. that's the thing compared to sony saves. and microsoft it it's cheap. it's super cheap it, yeah, it's but, like a non-factor i mean but sony and microsoft also don't require you to use a cell phone to use party chat like yes. oh i'm not saying it's oh, great sure. i don't i wouldn't for me, I won't party chat on it. This is not. No. This is something I'm like. I'm looking at it like, oh, I get these other old games. Yeah, they're <laughs> old, but they'll be fun to play on a portable. There's, like, there's really nothing fun to play yeah, on this no, I, console right now. Like, I get it. And for you, it's great too because the Switch is a perfect device for traveling. And I know you travel a right. lot. You know, mm. so like, it's. I, I see. I see it, its advantages, but for me personally, I don't take public transit. I don't travel. Uh, you know, like maybe um, you should ride. Maybe you should just go and ride the train around. Get on the train. Yeah, maybe I should just uh, just, maybe I just hop on the rail. And just hop on the, the train. Not Nintendo. <laughs> hop on the train. Get on the train and use your switch, guys. Come on, support Nintendo. <laughs> No, jobs. no wait don't do that because then you don't have money to buy our stuff but the one thing that the xbox one x has <laughs> over all of these platforms is that it actually enhances the games for better frame rates and better graphics on the xbox one x system that is a big a big thing i think that people overlook because like red dead looks so good dude with 4k it, it fuck it looks like a modern game it looks better than some of the modern games actually like i said it may look a little bit better than Kingdom Come Deliverance. <laughs> that game is new, like new, new. Um, but yeah, the other big thing for Microsoft that they have, of course, is the Game Pass, which is pretty much the closest thing to Netflix for gaming in the world. And I, I think at E3, we're going to get surprised with some third-party games releasing that on would be Cool. Game Pass. I think that's going to happen. I think Ubisoft. That would be cool if other people. I other think Ubisoft will do it. I think Ubisoft is going to come on and be like, some big game that they have is going to be on Game Pass. It might not be the Division Siege. 2, but it might be something else. Siege. Siege. There you go. Game Pass. I can totally see them doing that. Here, Siege is on Game Pass. Oh, think about, think about how many times they've done like free sales, weekends with yeah. Siege and stuff like that, right? Like, I could they're totally add, see them putting that. They're going to add two games, guys. <laughs> They're going to add two games. All. Okay, Siege is one. What is the other game that they're going to add? The I Division. Know what it is. The Division. Or no. Ghost Recon. Nope. For Honor. Nope. For Honor. For yeah. Honor. There Money. you go. Yeah, I was totally thinking the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, those are two like, very yeah. heavy multiplayer games that a free version would, would keep a, an audience there, right? Like, would keep right. people playing. That's so good. So I, I could totally see that. And, I, I, and I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that we'll, we get to see some of that at E3. Hopefully we get to see more than just Ubisoft hop on board. Maybe we get other publishers on there, like Square Enix. Maybe they'll release more games on the Game Pass, because they already have released some games on the Game Pass, like Tomb Raider. Maybe they'll put Hitman on there or something. You never know. Oh, they don't actually own that anymore, do they? No. Yeah. <laughs> IO Interactive maybe come out and be like, Hitman is on there too, guys. Woo! <laughs> I love that game. And, of course, Xbox One X and Xbox itself, the team, continues to improve the the UI for the system. I mean, we've seen the iterations of the UI change so much, but pretty lately it's been stable, and they just keep improving upon it. Like, every time I launch my Xbox, it feels alive. When I launch my PlayStation, it feels like I'm alone. It feels mm -hmm. like I'm in there like... Oh, I mean, we've said this I'm before, alone. too, right? Like. Yeah. And and I've noticed it a lot more recently because I've been playing my PlayStation. Yeah, it feels so playing God of War there. and stuff. Like I just I go in there and I'm like I don't like where this is. I don't like how this is set up. I don't like how you get to the store and this and that. And then just like user like to find your settings. And, like I didn't even know how to fucking find my settings. And I was like, where the fuck is the settings? <laughs> the settings at? are buried in you there. Know yeah. I mean? It's like it's buried all the way over to the side, and it doesn't yeah. even look like it would be settings by the logo and whatever. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck is going on? And, yeah, but I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I am so used to the Xbox UI yeah. that 
I don't have issues navigating it. A lot of people say they do. A lot of people think, oh, it's full of junk. I'm like, I don't, what are you talking oh, it's about? Full of junk. It's Everything's full there. Of like, advertisements. My... And I'm like, what did they, what yeah. you, they're a fucking company. Of course they're going to advertise them. And usually the advertisements make sense to what I'm playing. Like, it'll be for PUBG exactly. or for Fortnite or for, hey, you haven't played this Xbox Games with Gold game. Download the fucking Metal Gear Solid 5 right now. It's available. It's like yeah. all that and shit. And it's like a little tiny square in the fucking corner like yeah. why how does that bother you you know what i mean? <laughs> yeah i totally but, agree yeah. but and, i get lost in some boys like, especially when you get into like trying to go through their settings and stuff like that it's like there's so many fucking settings, like, and settings, settings yeah. and so far it's like yes. what the fuck is this you know like I'm, i was going trying to go in and turn on hdr and stuff and i couldn't figure that shit out but i think my tv just it for some reason my TV is not compatible with the PlayStation 4 and HDR. That's weird. Mine, yeah. mine is. It looks pretty but good. My Xbox uh, is. And other features that the Xbox has, Brink just brought this up, they also don't just have the Game Pass. They have EA Access, and they're the only platform that has EA Access on it at the moment. Yeah. That's yeah, another PC, besides PC. Oh, and PC, but and PC has a different library also. Well, yeah, but well, you think yeah, about consoles and, and how beneficial it is to have EA Access when you want to try a game for 10 hours, you can. You know, and you get a discount when you buy it. It's so good to have that on there. And it's thirty bucks a year. That's so cheap. Think about I don't mind paying. Think it. about that. It is so cheap when you think about how much it is. Um, not to mention, they also are the the company that supports virtual surround sound with Adobe Atmos and the Windows Sonic yes. software. That shit makes a difference, dude. When you're wearing headphones. Dude, I was playing, what was it? Last night I was playing PUBG with my regular earbuds that I have with my Samsung Galaxy, the AKG headphones, and I could hear everything. Everything. It was like like something was to my left, I could hear it to the left. Even the even when you're using the Dolby Atmos, even the main menu on the Xbox, like the home menu, is supported with Dolby Atmos. When you're switching to the right, you hear the sounds on the right. When you're switching to the left, you hear the sounds on the left. When you're going down on the screen, you hear the sounds on the bottom. It's kind of weird, but they they got that. Sony doesn't have that. Nintendo and i got to say they do a that. great job at that, too, with I was playing Sea of Thieves on PC. And it, I felt like I was on the Xbox. I had the Dolby Atmos installed. Yeah. So that's running in the background all the time, I think. Because mm-hmm. uh, you can just go into your options on your PC and change it to Dolby Atmos. Yeah, and I think it's a one-time transaction, so it works really yeah, well. It's Fifteen with bucks games as well. Yeah. yeah, on Xbox you can you can download the Dolby Atmos app, and it'll work with your surround sound system in home. But if you want to use the headphone versions, you have to pay the fifteen bucks. But with, if you don't if you don't want to pay the fifteen bucks, use the free Windows Sonic software. It works just as good, and it supports more games because Dolby Atmos supports like. A list of games right now. It's like twenty games or fifteen games. They support like Rainbow Six Siege, Assassin's Creed Origins, uh, Star Wars. They support a few games like Tomb Raider, supported by it. Um, but not every game is supported by it. it. It'll benefit from it, but not fully supported by it. Right. Yeah. So another another great feature that Xbox has that they just announced, and I know this is not for everybody, mm-hmm. and. None of us are probably going to need this, but I think it's a fucking amazing thing that they're doing is the accessibility controller. This thing is going to help a lot of people that can't normally play games have the ability to play a game, and I think that's great. Like, that's an awesome thing for for Microsoft to do because it's not even like, hey, we're going to make a shitload of money off this thing. It's like no, we're gonna we're gonna give more people access to our platform that normally wouldn't be able to. You know, when you think about a controller, me, you, uh, everybody else here, everyone listening. I mean, I, I don't want to say everybody, but you know what I'm saying. Like the majority of people, they have thumbs, they have yeah. hands to hold the controller, they have fingers to pull triggers, they have the ability to move their thumb to to do all this stuff. Not everybody has that, and, and I think. Opening opening this up to to a wider group of people to enjoy the the hobby that we all enjoy and be able to do that is amazing and and that accessibility controller it might not be big news to to uh you know the the average people but it's big news for for people that don't have those abilities you know and maybe they can now 
play a game with their goddamn mouth even you know what i mean yeah. like or you know people that are paraplegic can can figure out they can figure out a way for them to have these switches and and whatever that they can hit and play a game that and and enjoy these games that we all enjoy right so i think that that to me is is heartwarming you know what i mean like yeah. I think that's great it's a great thing that they're doing i think that's awesome and i know it's not something that everybody, everybody is going to be jumping. from yeah but it's something that that needs to be you know it's 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 a good thought you know yeah. so congrats um, to them on and and for that accessibility controller it'll be 99.99 on release date so not too much so the, the the thing is is you have to have all the switches and and stuff to plug into it right but yeah. i mean I, I assume, like, uh, you know, a, a, uh, someone like that trying to get into it or, you know, maybe there's someone that sits there and watches other people play all the time and they really enjoy watching it but have no way to do it. Now there's a way for, for them to do that, and I think that's great. It's a great it thing. It is. Yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, watching streamers that are disabled, like... It's pretty incredible what they can play. do. Yeah. It is and incredible. so I think it's cool for... I saw taking this step to come out and make this right. controller. And, and, and it's awesome. One more thing that Brink, Brink just keeps bringing all the key points. Yeah, I should have talked to him about this <laughs> before I started the show. <laughs> yeah, he says here, uh, Xbox is also supporting uh, 1440p monitors at yeah. 120 hertz. I mean, yeah, yeah, we forget about that. Yeah, the PC gaming, you know, like you can hook up your Xbox to your monitor and, and it'll work. It'll support it'll it work fully. Better, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, Use the features you that you paid for in your monitor. Mm -hmm. So there's all that, and not to mention 4K HDR. True. 4K. That's another thing too. That's now all thing. these monitors are coming out with 4K HDR. The prices are coming down on them, and it'll look just that much better if you want to game on your your monitor instead of you know if you're a PC gamer and you got an Xbox, like, oh, I need to get a TV and I need to bring it in the living room. Nope, just hook it up to the monitor, which it would have worked anyway, but now you can access all those features with your monitor. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and other news. Let's go into some other news. No Man's Sky <laughs> was featured on this week's Inside Xbox show. <laughs> they, they came out, the dude who uh, created No Man's yeah, Sky. But, but Jesus Christ, I felt like he was just doing the exact same thing again, just talking a bunch of bullshit that's never going to be true. Well, <laughs> that's kind of, yeah, you got to take everything you said with a grain of salt, but they're saying that Wait these features are minute. true. Hold on, hold on. I I took it the complete opposite way. I thought it was funny because it was like he kept making a comment like, well, I don't want to say anything or I don't want to, yeah. you know, I don't like, <laughs> just, I don't like talking about anything be no, you know, because I think like of what he took over got so much grief on that before it felt like every time he started to talk about something he would jump to that exact thing he would say that after because he's like oh shit maybe i said too much maybe i said you know <laughs> maybe i maybe i shouldn't have said that maybe i you know like it, it, it feels like he's still reaching for the stars you know what i mean and i hope that and no pun intended well maybe there was a pun intended there but <laughs> Um, you know, he's talking about having the multiplayer in there and all that stuff. This is all the same. This is all the same stuff we heard before. It's like, well, maybe they got it right now. Maybe they finally figured it all. <laughs> I, I, out. I feel like right. they did. But we're getting what Wait. we're getting is everything that is currently in the game, plus the new plus. release that's coming out called Next. Yeah. Right. Right. So the new that is all going to be part of that, and that's what he's saying is the Xbox is going to get all of that. All of that. We're so we're going to be complete game. game. Right. So yeah, we we saw him talk about the new multiplayer mode. He says you can now play co-op with friends on any planet in the universe in No Man's Sky. Um, you can you're going to be able to have all the features that it currently has in it, but with multiplayer as well. So you can build the bases, you can explore the planets, you can drive the vehicles, you can you know fly the spaceships everything you could do in no man's sky but with the players with you like other people with you uh the party size is unknown like it could be three players four players maybe five who knows how many you could have with you maybe one um but he says that's the thing and then in the no man's sky next update uh which is releasing on july 24th which is the day that it comes out on the xbox one uh, it will also be enhanced in 4k hdr for the xbox one x 
and uh, it will release in Europe on July 27th, so actually three days after it releases in North America, it'll release in Europe. Yeah, um, and it's always like that. Uh, Europe always has releases on Friday, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And we're so. on Tuesdays, usually. So he said, quote, this is what he described the multiplayer. He said, you'll be able to explore the universe with a small group of friends or bump into random travelers. You can help friends to stay alive or prey on, another, on others to survive. Tiny shelters or complex colonies that you build as a team are shared for all players. You could fight as a pirate or a wingman in an epic space battle with friends and enemies. Race exocraft across weird alien terrains, creating racetracks and trails to share online. So it looks like they're going to have racing somehow involved in it. Um, all that stuff. Uh, I'm kind of excited for it. I have this on the PS4. And, I, and I, honestly, I might buy this for the Xbox if enough of my friends start playing it on there. I, I might you know, uh, buy this. John Jerome in the chat, he was just listening to an episode of The Horrible Gamers where, Jesus, you bought that No Man's Sky. Or no, you bought a PS4. Just to play <laughs> yes, it was. Mm-hmm. It was yeah, the yeah, reason yeah, I it, bought my first yeah. PS4. It, yeah. it totally was. I, I remember that because Ions gave me shit. Brink gave me shit. You can't <laughs> believe you're buying PS4. I was like, dude, I was so hyped for that game. I was... Sold. I was sold on everything on all the lies they told me. I was sold on every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and they were lies, right? Oh, well, you should run into somebody eventually. Yeah, eventually. Nobody's there. <laughs> and the, the, the shitty part is, like, it was like 30 minutes within the game launch. People figured out how to go to the same planet, and they're like, you're not, like, I'm standing here. I'm standing here, too, dude. I don't see you. I don't see you either. Like, people figured it out yeah. so quick that it was all bullshit. Because <laughs> initially, like, when the first g- game first came out, and then people were like, I haven't seen anyone. The the No, Man, the no Man's Sky uh, Hello Games team was all like, oh, I mean, don't worry. Uh, you might run into somebody. The universe is so big. You might not actually see someone. And people were like, no, dude, we came to the same planet. <laughs> yeah. There's nobody here. <laughs> And then it was all live. Wow. Oh man. <laughs> um, but and here he is signing up to buy it again. I am. I'll buy. It. I, I'm telling you, <laughs> Wingman. <laughs> if you buy this, <laughs> third time. Before you buy it though, Jesus, you got to sell your Xbox oh, and then re-buy, re-buy the, the Xbox. Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. I got to resell. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a new Elite controller with it too. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> exactly. I think I can... Didn't I buy my PC just shortly after that? And I was you did, so. yeah. but I'm actually glad that I didn't buy it before. It was I saved myself sixty bucks because I would have gotten it for a PC right away, seeing how it was only on PS4 at the time. And but it, the game I think looks pretty. Uh, it is you know, it, it a cool game, dude. It is a cool and, game. Yeah, yeah, I like the art style. It, it's totally like uh, Elite Dangerous. I mean, people compare Elite Dangerous to No Man's Sky and say that it's like the more adult version of no man's sky because it's more simulation heavy like you you literally have to control everything on the ship and no man's sky is more like a arcadey flying you just press a to take off or whatever or x to take off and you're right triggered or fucking fly forward or boost or whatever like it's pretty arcadey but it's so awesome the first time you play that game and you see a planet and you're like i'm gonna go to that planet and you go to that planet and you're like i'm gonna land on this planet and you land on it it, it just works that's incredible to me, dude. I'm like, and and every time you're on planet, you look up at the sky, and it's nighttime or daytime or whatever time of the day it is, and you can see the moons and the stars and the planets around you, and you're like, if I wanted to right now, I could take off from here and go there, and you can totally do that in that game. That is incredible. You got to say yeah. that. That's fucking and this, incredible. The Steam community has embraced this game, even to this day. Yeah, there's a big community behind them, even on the PlayStation. There's people that play this every fucking day. And like I said, I got back into it a few months ago, but uh, it was too hard for me. It was, yeah, hard. What else uh, In other news, uh, there's a new game coming out for the Xbox and the PlayStation 4 called Sub Area. It will run... At a, well, pretty much this is a game coming out, um, but it's not fully optimized, according to some people. It is going to be an action puzzler with a few roguelite elements. Uh, the basic premise is manipulating the environment and using it against your opponents. 
which is already available for the PC. Sub area will be coming to the Xbox One and PS4 as well. But uh, it has been confirmed by the communications officer of the company, Iologica, that the PS4 and the Xbox One versions are going to both run at 720p resolution and between 30 frames and 60 frames a second. The upgraded consoles are a different story. For example, on the PS4 Pro, you're going to be able to play the game at 1080p, and on the Xbox One X, the resolution is going to be 720p. Both versions will run at 30 frames to 60 frames a second on the upgraded consoles as well. What do you guys think about this? A game coming out on the world's most powerful console just runs 720p. Oh, God. Wow. I don't know what the fuck Damn. they're thinking. What are they thinking? What are they thinking, Gunny? I don't know. It's bad. Bad optimization. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, but yeah, and pretty much State of Decay 2 is out came out yesterday for the people that paid the Ultimate Edition. Have you guys played it? Any of you guys bought that? No. No, I'm waiting for my Game Pass Tuesday to come along. Yep. Um, yeah, I know so I've seen some few people on my friends list that have bought it. I, I dude, I was gonna buy it because I wanted to play it this weekend. But then I was like, no, dude, you have Game Pass. What are you doing wasting fifty bucks on a game? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just know, wait. Like, just, just wait, Jesus. Patience. My patience is very thin though. I, I'm a very impatient person. I like to have things now and and yeah, it's... I know. I work on I work Tuesday through Friday, and I'm off Mondays. And I'll just be like, look, I'll just be staring at that buy button all day Monday. Ah, I should I should get it now so I can play it now. But, I went know. through the same thing, guys. Really? Honestly, like for that? some Mojo was playing yeah. it, and I was like, yeah. Oh, I'm like I want to play it. And they're like, no, Gunny's no, got no, Game no, Pass. No, no. I can just download it on Tuesday. And I'm like, <laughs> but uh, it's a long weekend up here. Yeah. I'm like, I got all fucking weekend. I could just buy it, and then. Like, no, you don't have the money. Stop doing that. Save it for another game, right? That you want to buy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, another news. Uh, E3 news, guys. We have some more E3 news for you. Uh, well, let's talk about E3 real quick. Let's talk about Microsoft's E3. What are we expecting from it? What are you expecting from it? Let's talk Jesus. about this. What? Did you read my messages to you? I do not read your messages yeah, at all. Yeah, I know we talked about... You should, should read the messages. Yeah, read the messages, but I know we talked about doing E3 predictions, but I don't know if we just want to hold off on that another week. Uh, another week? Oh, another week? I guess we'll hold off another week since Ryan has to leave in 30 minutes. Fuck I do. Man. Just leave. Sorry, him. guys. Just leave. We don't need you anymore. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right. See you later, guys. I'm out of here. Uh, I guess we'll go into the questions. Community questions. People in the chat on Facebook, you're watching live. Leave us questions. If you have any questions for us to answer, we'll answer them. Get to the questions. You can always leave questions on the Facebook group, Horrible Gamers Podcast Community. We'll always post on there. As well as our Discord channel. We have a Discord server, I guess is what you call it. Uh, you can leave questions on there as well for us to answer during the week of the show. Uh, go ahead. Got any questions? Question time. We got a uh, question from our friend Brian Tell Jr. Wants to know what restaurant that closed or claimed bankruptcy do you wish was open again? And I think he's asked this question before, but mine is always Johnny Garlic's the fuck? Uh, Guy Fieri, <laughs> but, which he sold. But there's still Johnny one Garlic's. or two around here. But I wish it was in my town. I'm trying to think. What? I don't know what? any restaurant that's yeah, the best chicken pasta down. ever. Oh, he did ask this before because I think my answer before was the Lion and the Dragon that used to be in my hometown Pickering. Sounds like a and, Chinese uh, restaurant. No, it was it was a, like they had they had all you could eat wings and ribs mm. for like fifteen bucks. Mm. You could just sit there eating wings all night. Oh mm. it was so good. But they closed down and their wings were really good. They were big, big giant fucking wings. Oh so good. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. I don't have anything. Do you have anything, Wingman? Uh, I would say I would go with Chee Chee's. Yeah, I remember them. Yep, that was a really good restaurant chain. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brian again with another question: What actor do you see in a movie and automatically think, "Well, I'm not going to see that movie"? Is there Will any actor? 
Will Smith. Really? <laughs> really? Really? Yep. Huh. Okay. You don't want to see a movie with Will Smith in it? What, you, what movie what? did you see him in that you didn't that you didn't like or hated? Yeah, but you or just hated it, him. It, it's, it's it's I don't like it. It's the it's when these prima donna actors and actresses feel that they need to push their political agendas anytime they're asked a question or in an interview or or giving uh doing a thank you speech for an award yeah. and they come out and go oh the president sucks or this or that I'm like you know what I'm done with you you know. You can have your opinion, and I can respect that, but when you're in an award ceremony or you're doing an interview for a movie, keep that crap to yourself. When you've got to try to mm. push that, then I have no interest in even following you or watching any of your movies. I'm not going to support you in any way. And there's well, a lot of actors that fall into that category that I just don't watch, <laughs> but uh, he's one that popped in my mind when I saw the question. Well, with that being said, I don't think Trump is a good president. Uh, <laughs> Screw you! Start <laughs> so giving my political opinions you know, on the show. Start <laughs> so giving my political I'm opinions right now. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't. I don't want to start a whole uh, brigade on Trump. I think you guys know how I feel. About <laughs> we know. Him. We know, Ryan, you Canadian. <laughs> Even though Canada has been on the news lately for some weird shit, you seen that racist lady at the restaurant? Yes, I did see going that. off about speak for Canadians. <laughs> I'm that Canadian. This is my me. country. <laughs> that lady. I thought it was the guy I was in New York. that restaurant, man. I would have told her to <laughs> get the fuck out of my country. This is my country. This is Canada. This is my country. I was laughing. I was like, she sounds like an American right now. <laughs> she did. That's exactly oh, what I was thinking the whole time I was watching it. It's like you're not Canadian. You're fucking American. <laughs> and then the other lady who uh, who took a shit at the Tim Hortons. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I was yes. laughing so hard at that article. Yeah. It was funny. <laughs> that was hilarious. I didn't realize that was in Canada. That, oh. was, that, was, that was Tim Hortons. Yeah, it was a Tim yeah. Hortons. Yeah, she's talking to him. I what would she want to use? She wanted to use the restroom. And throw their shit at them. Yeah, she yeah. took a shit right there <laughs> in front of the front counter. Right there and just oh, oh my gosh, that was like some primal was... shit right there. Like she yeah. went into her primal mode. <laughs> like you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna poop right. I'm gonna throw this at you. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. That is so crazy. Canada's going crazy this week. I don't know what's going on up there. <laughs> um, well, I mean, America can't speak for anything better. As, a, going on? as an actor, yeah. I, I don't, I don't see any actor and think I'm not going to see that movie. What I, I watch any movie as long as the topic is interesting to me. If it's not interesting, yeah. like I don't want to watch that. Like I usually don't. Yeah. I usually don't care who's in a movie. Yeah, like, it's like not, it's, it's that's good, not what I good. go to a movie or a TV show or whatever for. And there's not really anyone that I would say, like, yeah, I won't watch that because like, that person's in there. Like you that know? movie that everybody tells me to watch, I, Tanya, you know, because it's you know, from Portland. It's, you know, I live in Oregon, right close to Portland. And it's like, oh, you should watch, you need to watch this. You know, I'm like, I have no interest in watching a fucking figure skater movie bullshit. I don't want to watch this. I have no interest in that. Just don't. No, and I can't think of any actor or actress or any one that I that I wouldn't watch. Yeah, I can't think of any. I mean, there's some that are out there. I'll be like, man, they're just not good actors or actresses. But <laughs> yeah. you know, or they're just yeah. But, yeah, but even yeah. still, if someone said, hey, it's a good movie, but it has this actor in it, you would probably still watch the movie. Right? Like, yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Anyways. Yeah. What's the next? Anyway, so. Uh, Brian again. Hey, Ryan. Uh, playing in the Halo 5 competitions at the Cineplex Theaters. If so, would you mind, or, or if so, would he mind if I showed up shirtless with an HP, HGP logo painted on my chest to cheer him up? <laughs> in this, awesome. well, I'm, I'm going to add something on here, Brian. Would, okay, you got the logo, the HP, HGP logo. Or are you going to be in a Speedo? Just regular clothes? I mean, sure, I don't think you'd bro. get into the theater with a Speedo but, at least. <laughs> Why? Why would you go there, Gunny? Shirtless I, means no top. Why do you gotta add a yeah. add him in with a speedo? What's yeah, wrong what's with wrong you? With, yeah, dude, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Well, he went shirt. He's going shirtless. He might as well go pantless. We don't need to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's gonna try and get into the theater. You know, Gunny. You know, he's got to get into a public place. So I don't think he's gonna show up in a speedo. I'm thinking like you know about. I don't know if you. I don't know if you've seen Brian Telp before, but I have had the pleasure of meeting this man, and he is not a small man. He's a fairly large man. Tall. He's the wingman of Canada. 
He's a big <laughs> you know, dude. I am eight feet tall, you know. Yes, yeah, yeah. he's pretty tall, guys. I'm just saying. You can see Ryan there, you know. Ryan's it's like, pretty it's tall, tall, too. Like, when I met him, I was like, hey, man, how's it going <laughs> up there? How's the weather? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if you want to talk to Wingman. I freeze outside, you know. He's got his red Speedos on, his HTTP logo, you know, face paint. I'm saying Ryan if on. someone is willing to show up to support me in a sports tournament, esports tournament like that, I'm all for it. I love yeah. you. I love you as a fan. If you're willing to do that for me, yeah, I will but get I'm up. Gonna, I will get gonna, up so. and go down there after the match and shake your hand for showing up to, like that to support me. That's what I would do. What he's talking about is at the movie theaters up here. Yeah. That's what Cineplex is. That's the movie theaters. That's mm-hmm. one of the movie theater chains up here, like AMC and yeah. whatever. Um, and they they put on these tournaments, and you go to the theater and go into the ABX fucking theater and, and, and play a game on the big screen with the surround sound. That'd be so hard to do they on do the big screen. Stuff. Yeah. That'd be it's hard. crazy. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, next, uh, next, <laughs> next one from uh, Amar Subasic. He wants to know, this is Alan's friend, why is Alan maybe shady and why do we hate Gunny and Wildlands? Well, we all know Alan maybe is just shady. He's just like that. I mean, we, we just I mean, that. you've heard you've heard stories on the show yeah. about how Alan maybe is shady. We just know that, you know. It's and to so go, I not only go, uh, go to hunt him down in Wildlands, I hunt everybody down that's not on my team. Alan maybe messaged me the other day. He told me that I needed to get Wildlands so I could kill you, Gunny. He was like, he was saying that for some odd reason, you're actually really, really good at the game. That he doesn't I'm know why. I surprised how good I was at that game. Yeah, he's like, I don't even know how he's that good at the game, but he is that good at the game, and I need you to get on this game so you can kill him, Jesus. And I'm like, I don't want to buy that game. And he's like, we'll game share with Gunny or something so you can kill him in the game. I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm all right, dude. No, thank you. He's like, oh, he's so frustrated with you, Gunny. And believe it or not, Alan's actually a pretty good coach in the game. I got to say, he's like, yeah, go here. Go <laughs> See the that one that showed you how to play and you just became better than him? Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, damn. I got to learn the night mode. That's that's the the few maps that I got to learn. Because mm. you could use your night vision, but you, it's shit. You can't see you can't see him even at a distance or close up until you're dead. Ooh. Next question. Uh, next one, John Jerome. Do you think Sony would be more open to crossplay if Xbox had a larger install base? Does the Xbox had the larger install base? Uh, a yes. larger one. L- let's say they were even. I would say yes, John. I would say sure. Yeah, we're kind of neck and neck. Let's do it. If I Xbox was the they'd still be assholes about it. If Xbox was the leader, of course, of course they would be open to it because it would be the losing platform or whatever. I guess. Well, right now them. it's like I- I'm just throwing a number out there. It's eighty and thirty, right? Eighty percent and thirty percent. But I think if they. Well, not eighty you know, million. Somehow, we're like I like how like, people throw these numbers for Sony out there, like eighty million consoles sold. But there's no way in hell eighty million people are on PlayStation Four playing online multiplayer games. There's no way. No, there's a lot no, of single players out there. Yes, but... <laughs> I don't play yeah. multiplayer games. I have PS Plus, but it's because of the free games. I don't play the multiplayer games on there. Maybe I'll play H One Z One next week, but that's it. Like I'm not gonna play. Call of Duty on my PlayStation just won't. I don't know. Maybe they're just waiting for more Phil Spencer tweets to say how how or just to keep congratulating me on all their award winning games. Hmm. Like after so many, will they then say, you know what, Phil, you've earned your keep? You know? No, they don't give Let's a shit. Play. It's all about no. the way they look towards the consumer. At the end of the day, all those guys go and have lunch together, dude. <laughs> they're all executives. They don't give a fuck. They're all rich people that go and have lunch together. together. Yeah, they all golf together at the Seattle golf course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, like, they do. People fail to realize that shit. They, it's, it's ridiculous, but it is yep. what it is. John also wants to know, do we have any good bubble games to recommend? Uh, Legends, that's the one I play on there. Mm. Uh, Gems of War. What? what? Gems oh. of War. Okay, we didn't hear you first time. <laughs> yeah. That that is a good game. Gems of War is good. I do play that. Uh, Game Dev Tycoon. <laughs> I 
could play that game for hours. I don't care. I don't care. I'll play that shit for three hours straight on my phone. Trying to make the perfect game. 10 out of 10. Out of 10 out of 10 out of 10. Anything from you, Ryan? Like as far as mobile games go? Um, I mean, I've, not that I haven't talked about already. You know, you guys know I, I got into Guns of Boom. And uh, I play a lot of Clash Royale. Um, I started playing that Jurassic Park game every once in a while. The one, the one that's like Pokemon Go, where you're capturing oh, dinosaurs. Oh, is that good? That came out. Huh? I forgot about it's, that. It's yeah, it's just like Pokemon Go. When is the Jurassic Park game coming out for the Xbox and PlayStation? The, the build your. That's soon. I think that's next month. I want to buy that. Yes. I'm gonna be all into that because I was. I've been playing City Skylines a lot lately, and it's good. Everything's. I love those games. I feel like also I would recommend Plants vs. Zombies. I haven't played in a while. I know it's been out for a long time. Yeah, it's a good game. But they, yeah, there's a lot of microtransactions, but you can play that game a lot without paying a dime. Um, yeah. yeah. Pandemic is a really good game, too. That's where you make the virus and you spread it around the world. That's a good game. Yes. It's, yeah, I think that's available on, yeah, on everything. a lot of different systems is even on the available. xbox and shit is available <laughs> i bought it on the xbox i don't even know why i don't really play it on it i did i wanted to support them but yeah that game is huge i think it's the number one paid strategy game on the ios platform yeah i Still. see it on, i think i see it on ios on steam yeah, and that and that game came out like fucking six years ago now it's crazy Anyway, our last one is from Stay O'Connor. How do you guys feel is the best way to get good GUD at a game type? For instance, if I want to get good at Madden, probably don't start with NHL, right? <laughs> so I know what this question is about. <laughs> I know what it's about. Uh, our friend Clint and our friend Steven here got into a little argument <laughs> the other day on, on our Facebook group. Uh, they were arguing about how you get good at a multiplayer game, and Clint was saying, you know, like... He was saying that he was not buying Call of Duty because the reason he played Call of Duties or he bought them was because he would play the single player campaign first to get decent at the multiplayer, kind of learn the characters and stuff, right? And Steven <laughs> took a jab at him and said the reason you're not good at multiplayer games is because you suck, not because you need to learn how to play them. You just suck. Like, you're not good. Stop playing these games. And uh, it was a big argument between them. <laughs> um, and, yeah, they got into a big heated debate between each other. But he, he <laughs> look at Steve, <laughs> he would ask this question in the in the show. That's he, The reason he asked it is because <laughs> he's trying to get us to answer his point of view. His point of view is you get good at a multiplayer because you play that multiplayer, not because you play the single-player campaign of that game. You get good at it because you play the actual multiplayer. It's like... You get good at PUBG because you play PUBG, not because you play Fortnite. You know what I mean? That's what yeah. he's trying to say. And uh, I kind of agree with him. Honestly, you do get good at a multiplayer game because you play the multiplayer game of that whatever it is. Like If you want to get good at Battlefield, you have to play Battlefield. You cannot play Call of Duty and then expect to go into Battlefield and be like, What is it? I'm good at Call of Duty. What what can I be good at this? It's like because Battlefield is a whole different game. There's destruction. Yeah. There's bigger player base. There's all kinds of different, more dynamic things going on in the game that are just happening that don't ever happen in a Call of Duty match. You know, it's just like like PUBG and Fortnite is a perfect example. In Fortnite, things happen that would never happen in PUBG. Like in PUBG, you're never going to run across somebody in the field shoot at them and all of a sudden have them build a tower towards the sky and be sniping you from the top of the tower. That's just not going to happen ever, you know? And it's just stuff like that. It makes sense, Stephen. I kind of agree with you. Yeah, I think, you know, not only the obvious, which is which is play the game a lot, play it often, but I also recommend going to, and this is not something that I haven't done in a long time, is is go to YouTube. Look for somebody who who knows that game, the YouTube. ins and outs, and plays it a lot. You no, know, for the best strategy. tips and tricks. Exactly. Yes, yeah. for some yes. from a pro. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I'm a pro. Go to the pro, bro. I'm an esports pro, bro. There you go. They have those, right? You can go on. Go no, on you're YouTube. not. Go to <laughs> do it. Good, good, Ryan. You want to go, bro? You want to go PUBG one v one? Let's do this. No. Let's do this. <laughs> no, don't. 
And then I'll play I, you I in pinball. Agree. I mean, I, yeah, I'll take you on in pinball. Let's do that. <laughs> I mean, I I get what I get what Stu's saying, but I like there's there's people like me yeah. that I honestly I don't I don't compete when it comes to that shit, and I can play it as much as I want. I'm not gonna get good. Maybe when I was 20 years old, I could start playing and I would get good. But fuck, man, I'm too old now for this shit. Like it's just not like I don't have the hand eye coordination. We're that all I used too old to, for man. this shit. I'm too <laughs> old for really this shit. And I'm 26. <laughs> hey, you know what, guys? A game. I, Quickly, I didn't mention a game this in the beginning, but I did buy a shit. What did I buy? Not Marvel versus Capcom, but uh, Injustice. Just- Injustice Two, yes. Yeah. And yeah, I play. I got it for the story, but it, it does run me through the tutorial, and mm. I can take the extended tutorial with extra moves and other stuff. And I went through that second one, but I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm gonna start the story and just kind of run through. And I want to. I want to play as Batman and beat. Uh, Superman's ass, and yeah, and just have a good time. And the game is beautiful, so start. I've been playing that today. Awesome. And... Well, yeah, but I know, I know, I'm never going to be online and and win any matches. So. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, and I'm the same way, Gunny. It's like I, I know you bought that, but I'll probably never touch it because I've already played through the story, and the story is great. Like you'll enjoy it. It was fun, but I'm not going to play this game online. I'll just get my fucking ass handed to me, and I know it. And I don't have the time to fucking sit there and get good at it. I don't. Are you using the left stick or the D-pad direction? Do you? Uh, I use really use my like D-pad. That. No, yeah. it's whatever you're comfortable with. I use I use the D-pad most of the time because I would use my Elite controller with the with the little tray thing on it. So that's what I, yeah, that's I would, what I have I would use right that. now. Okay. Hmm. What yeah, about you? What, what about you, Wingman? Do you ever play multiplayer games and then, but like, play the single player to learn the multiplayer kind of? I I typically will play the single player first. Yeah. So that I can get used to the controls and how things work before I go face other people. But now you won't be able to do that in Call of Duty. You're gonna have to face the people. Nope. Nope, go right into the it. fire! Right into the fire, Wingman! You're gonna go in there and kill people. Not and... gonna Not gonna buy their garbage <laughs> game. <gasps> Whoa, this is a surprise. Yeah, yeah, surprise yeah, yeah. development. Wait, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Wait. I've heard you say this before. Yeah, I have man. too. Like the last three years. Just like me. I've heard you say, I'm not buying Call of Duty this oh, year. Man. And then you right. always end up buying Call of Duty. Or someone gets it for you for Christmas or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I still have not bought Battlefield 1. Yeah, uh, but... <laughs> that was going to be my next question, Wing. If this year's E3, what will it take Battlefield V for victory well, for next week? For you actually. to purchase it, I don't. I just not a fan of Battlefield franchise anymore. I used to be. <gasps> um, honestly, what I would have more, I have more interest in seeing what Call of Duty is going to be like than I do Battlefield. I have no interest in Battlefield at all. I just don't. I just don't. And and honestly. I want to see what they're going to do with the Battle Royale mode for Call of Duty. I want to see Blackout or whatever they called it. Um, I want to see what that's going to do. I want to see how that works. you know. And, and if that looks really good, and it's like the Battlefield Battle Royale modes we're used to, and it, it runs the same way, and they can actually handle it, and it's smooth, then I'd probably pick it up just for that one mode, maybe. Just depends. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. But I don't know. We'll see. That's it for. You gotta wow me. The questions and the news and the show. That means this is the end of the show. But first off, you can find me on Xbox Live Gamer Tag Jesus Walks a Lot on PlayStation Network GSUS Walks a Lot. I'll be playing some more PUBG this week. I'll play God of War. I'll be playing City Skylines Disasters. I love that shit. And uh. Other stuff, I guess. Oh, wait, that one game coming out. State of Decay 2. Yes. <laughs> I'll be playing that sometime this week, hopefully. It's got co-op. Uh, we'll see how that works. I'm looking forward to it, actually, because I really enjoyed the first one. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll come back next week with our E3 predictions. They're supposed yeah, to be yeah. this week. Ryan, looking at you. 
Anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I have things to do. Sorry, sorry. Go to I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm to go find a new apartment. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> you live in a cardboard box. It's okay, Ryan. We won't judge yeah. you. Yeah. I'll get my uh, I'll get my gigabit uh, fucking internet connection to my cardboard box. <laughs> if a cardboard box is next to like a server center, you may be able to do that. <laughs> Just fucking climb up the pole and fucking attach the internet. Steal the internet from the fucking server. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Anyways, that's right, where you can find me, guys. Put duct tape on it. Where can, Johnny, we... where can they find you? Yeah. Oh, find me on Xbox Live, on Steam, Twitter. Under Gunny Chief. Gunny Chief. Wing, what about you? You can find me on Xbox Live, Wingman709. And you can also follow me or find me over at this Xbox Life podcast yeah. on Sunday evening. And tune in tomorrow. We're going to have a very special guest on our show. This very week. special. I'm usually live. Oh. Mm. Mm. I should I be home. Mm. I might be home. Somebody you guys are very familiar with, that's all I can say. <gasps> Could it be Bron? He you might guys, be in the chat room right now. You guys can find me on Xbox Live, Steam, and PSN under Gib8777. And what does Gidget say, Jesus? Peace out, Russell Sprouts. We'll see you on the next edition of the Horrible Gamers Podcast next week. The Microtransaction Patreon edition of the show. We love you. Bye. Clean your controllers and go to bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>